And live from Davenport High School, this is Tony Brubaker alongside Brian Hill as we bring you an exciting game between the Wolves of Davenport High, now 5-0, and and the Ducks of Taylor High School, who are 3-2. and And despite the difference in records, they both had success this year, Brian, and should have a good game here tonight. Yeah, both sides coming on, you know, on a little bit of a roll. A district home, uh, homecoming game for Davenport. A lot of people in the stands, a lot of energy around the, around the field. And uh, in, a, in a crowded stadium, should be a fun environment for a good ball game tonight. Davenport has gotten up to their 5-0 record with some good wins over Victoria West, over Kerrville Tiver, Tyvee, a uh, closer game against Piper, and then that game we called two weeks ago against Lockhart, and then last week they won at Divine. Here, Davenport, Davenport will receive the opening Dunks. kickoff. Taylor <laughs> deferred. They won the toss and deferred. Griman and Brown are deep. Be an interesting game. The uh, kicker for Taylor is Justice Tucker, or uh, pardon me, this is Isaac. Isaac Castro, a junior, who has not tried a field goal this year, but he is 21 out of 25 on extra points. And the kickoff is underway. Fielded at the 17, out across the 30, a little bit of room before finally being dragged down just before the 40-yard line. Grimen on the return, brought down by 22, Solis. That was Emmett Griman, the junior. First and 10 from their own 38-yard line. So it'll be the usual cast of Hamlin at quarterback and then a bunch of receivers, Miller, Payne, Griman, Singletary out there, and then the running back who's done just about everything this year. In five games, 1,038 yards, 207 yards a game, and 16 touchdowns. Yeah, I think the last time we were here, he had about 400 of those yards in one <laughs> night and seven touchdowns. He put on a heck of a show against Lockhart last time we were here. So there's the two-by-two two set with two receivers either way. Hamlin will roll to his left, a short roll, now over the top, looking for his receiver, and it could have been picked off, and it was picked off by the defensive back. Singletary, the intended receiver, Jarvis Anderson. We'll talk more about them now that they have the ball as they intercept the first play of the game. Jarvis Anderson, a 5'11", 165 senior, is their go-to guy. He's their best corner, best defensive player. He's also their best receiver and running back, even though they do have a starting running back that has really good numbers. Yeah, that was an awesome, a, a great play by him at corner. He was kind of that trail position. Safety was playing over the top. A little sprint out into the boundary for, uh, for Davenport for us there. Thought he might have had a chance at the underneath one. Took a shot over the top and just, you know, not a, not a bad throw, just a really good play by the, uh, by the cornerback. Don't know if we've seen this a lot, but out of the shotgun, three receivers, now two. Quarterback keeper, that's Ryan Valdez. He's a senior at 5'8", 165 pounds. He's run for 130, thrown for 600. That time he gets not very much on a first down run. And much like Davenport on offense, they're gonna try to go no huddle, go quick, and kind of make, make the defense go simple. Valdez barks out signals, defense sets, now more motion. He wants to throw, there's an early flag, there's pressure on him, and before getting sacked, he gets the ball off and it's caught by a receiver who now runs the far sideline. Looks like Connor Cobb, who goes all the way inside the 20, but this one will come back because there was a motion flag, I do believe, against the Ducks. Pardon me, that was Devin Valdez, the younger brother of the quarterback. White Hat hadn't said anything yet, but everybody's starting to walk backwards, so we're assuming it's on it's on Taylor, but he hadn't officially made a call yet. So everybody is coming back. We've played just under a minute. Still no score. It's second down and 10, or will it be second and 15 if this is five yards against the Ducks? The motion man was Connor Cobb, who I thought might have caught the ball. I 
mistakenly saw Valdez as a nine, and then he was the one who went in motion and then ran the sideline, but uh, the pass over the top in the scramble. And we talked about it before he came on the air. Taylor really looking to try to have an explosive first quarter, get a lead, and uh, that was certainly a play that would have provided that. But, uh, yeah. you know, a penalty, a big first play, uh, first play of the game for him. They get an interception, and then what was going to be the second play on offense was going to be about a 50, 60-yard gain. Yeah. Uh, but they got to mark it off and go five yards back, and so we'll see if they can get that momentum back. Coach Zimmer Hansel's point before the game was play fast and get an early quick start because this is a Taylor team that has won three games all because they won the first quarter. At least that's the trend. There are two losses. They lost the first quarter, and that's something our coaches have talked about, getting a quick start. There's no gain, basically, maybe even a loss of a little bit. Once again, they're going to go fast. Timeout by us. Yeah. Coach is not, not our happy. coaches are not happy about something right now. Mad at one of his safeties or a linebacker, Marcus Brew Adams, and some others are getting yelled at right now. Yeah, it's got to be a communication thing with Ta Mike, Taylor Mike. going very quick. They've obviously repped it all week, knowing right. Taylor's right. going to go fast. Hey, when they do this, when they go fast, or when they're in this alignment, we've got to adjust to this. And uh, it appears that uh, you know early on had some miscommunication. And uh, my my the thought also is we might not have seen this formation because they've thrown only 63 passes in five games. Maybe they haven't shown a lot of trips to one side or something like that. And my guess is we didn't react to it very well and we heard about it. Yeah, it's either, it, it's, it's either something that they haven't seen or it's something that uh, it, for a coach to get that upset that early on, yeah. typically it means we've talked about this all week. Right, yes. We, we've read yes. this all week, and then, you know, first time we have an opportunity to make that adjustment, we don't do it. And so, uh, again, that's one of the things, one of the advantages of an offense going fast is, yes. is a defense not really having that time to communicate and get lined up like they're supposed to. So a sub has happened. It's third and long. Valdez wants to throw, looking right over the top. Has cover, good coverage, really good coverage on the play. That's Darian Brown, the senior corner. Good coverage by Brown there. You know, there was some contact at the top, but both of them were going for the ball, and it was a good job by Brown getting on top of that post, getting them stacked. And in that case, when you're when you're on a track for the ball and you're looking for the ball, you have right. just, just as much right as the receiver to try to go get that ball. So even though there was contact, it was really good In coverage. essence, he, he no stopped sense. Anderson from getting to the ball because he had top coverage. Basically, he, was, he ran the route yes. better, than, yes. better than the receiver yeah. did. Yep. Here's a punt, a quick kick, almost got some pressure on it. Grimans back to field it and does so on a bounce. He's surrounded by about seven or eight ducks and goes down after a short gain. And the Wolves will have offensive possession again just two minutes into the first quarter. Their defense did the job after the turnover. That was a good job by Griman fielding that ball. You know, he only got two or three yards after he caught it. But again, we talk about it all the time, particularly when you're punting with a little bit of breeze right. behind you. If that thing gets to keep rolling, that could roll out for another 15, 20 yards. So good job of catching it there. Now they have it on the plus side of their own 40-yard line and uh, much better starting field position because he fielded that ball. So Hamlin out of the shotgun with Chaston right beside him. I'm sorry, Golden, Chaston Golden. I'll get you both of his names. Here's a handoff. Caught in the backfield, though, is Golden as he goes down. A good job by Jalen Rush, one of their Golden tackles. No Looks like Rush came free on the backside. I'm not sure whether it was a read play and the quarterback could have kept it or not, uh, but he came free down the line of scrimmage. A good play, and, and again, just uh, much like Taylor, uh, Davenport's going to go quick. And they go with a 5-2-3 type of defensive formation. Five down linemen. This time they get a quick hole, and Golden takes advantage of it. He scampers across midfield, across the 40, and finally pushed down inside the 30 as someone got a hand on him there. That's uh, Alejandro Randall, their middle linebacker, who tracked him down, but here goes the Wolves quickly. Hamlin keeps it, he wants to throw it. It's intended for Golden out in the flat. He'll get a short gain, maybe four or five, uh, maybe six yards. It was Griman, pardon me. He was one of the two backs out of the backfield. So second and four after the gain of six. Golden keeps, kind of maneuvers his way through the line, trying to find the hole and brought down 
again by the defensive line. That was Rush again who got the bigger part of it. Third and short, down inside the 20 yard line. Uh, I'm sure within field goal range, but might be thinking four down territory here. Got two downs to get it. So it might take a shot up the field or, you know, handing it off is, is never a bad idea either. Eight and a half to go, first quarter. Hamlin, a little option, pitches it to Golden. Hamlin takes a shot. Golden gets first down yardage, then near the 10, before he's dragged down by a couple of defenders, including the safety, Jackson Miller. And again, they're going quick. Try not to give Taylor defense much time to get lined up and get communicated. Now we've got a bunch of trips set down into the boundary here. They're going to do a toss. Same play. A couple extra blockers, but the defense reads it, and that's Miller, the safety, who has another tackle as he's wrestled out of bounds after not much of a game. It didn't do a great job that time. We didn't do a great job that time of setting the edge. Yes. Uh, had a bunch of, had a bunch of uh, uh, packed receivers in there looking to pin some guys, but it looked like that. Uh, the one walk backer didn't get a great edge set there and was never able to get uh, get out on the edge uh, like what was intended to. So a single receiver to this side along with a tight end. Now in motion is Payne. They fake the pitch to him. Hamlin keeps it. It's a quarterback keeper. He gets about five to the five. That'll be uh, second and four, actually third and four. We've had a lot of success in, in, in the previous games and this game already with bringing a receiver in motion in that in that fly sweep motion, getting the eyes of the defense, looking at him a little bit, and then running the ball back the other way. A couple times giving it to him just to keep the defense honest, but the explosive plays, especially two weeks versus right. uh, two weeks ago versus Lockhart and already in this game, uh, getting them going that way, get the defense eyes, and then running it back the other way. So two by two, motion again coming near side. Hamlin runs it to the other side and gets tracked down in the backfield again. This one is a different linebacker. It's actually a defensive end, Coley, uh, Colby Solis. So it's fourth down and I believe here comes the field goal unit. As again, the Wolves talked about getting a quick start and getting some points on the board early. This is Josh Gill. One for one on field goals this year, 25 of 28 on points after. This one a 25 yard field goal. I saw him hit him from in the mid 30s in pregame. Good hold on a low snap. The kick is up and it's good as the Wolves take a 3-0 lead. 6.54 to go in the opening quarter. We'll take uh, a quick timeout here on the Wolves Network. Tonight's broadcast on the Wolf's Network is brought to you by Comal Independent School District, Audi North Park, Chick-fil-A, Walmart, Maximum Altitude, Fisher's Market, Casa Roofing, Gilman Automotive Group, Maxed Alt Jeep and Overland Accessories, and Wig Productions. As we're back at Davenport and they'll kick off Will the Wolves, our referee tonight is Mike McWilliams, umpire John Reinhardt. Clayton Williams is the headline judge. The line judge is Char uh, Charlie Harpole. Mike Broadbent is the back judge. Ben Rivers, the field judge. And Ron Carr is the side judge. Those are the officials tonight. Miles Mendes handling the kickoff duties. His high short kick will be fielded at about the 20. Coverage not too bad as we'll bring him down after a short five yard gain as the defense got there in a hurry tonight. I want to give a major shout out to the chain crew over there. You know, if you're the home team, you got to provide your own chain crew. It's obvious those three guys over there have been doing it because Went on that long run that we had, and they know that the that we go fast on offense. They are sprinting down there to get the chains. Uh, being a chain crew guy tonight ain't for the faint of heart. Both groups going as fast as they can, so they're having to sprint up and down the field to get those chains set in time. And our thanks tonight, yeah, our thanks tonight to uh, Kent Power Sports for the game sponsorship here. 
There's a handoff and a broken tackle. They're running back Adrius Fisher, a sophomore, has 400 yards, 6.6 .6 a carry, and seven touchdowns. Gets a nice gain of about 15 yards that time out to the 40. He broke a couple of tackles. He sure did. Near the line a of scrimmage. Pretty impressive run there. We jump. Well, the ball was snapped. Now Flags we'll come out. They'll throw it over the top. A little contact, and might be offensive player interference. Offensive interference. As the catch was made, but flags came out all, all over that one. Number Plus, 10. so probably would be offsetting penalties. Yeah, yeah I think we're going to get a, an offsides on us, and then a lot of times offenses do that. If they feel somebody in the neutral zone, they'll snap it, and they just throw the ball up because right. it's a free play. In that case, the uh, Taylor wide receiver, I think he shoved down our corner, and uh, they're going to call offensive pass interference, so the penalty should offset and just redo first down. Officials discussing all of it. Our umpire and our head linesman. Our referee again. Not real quick to give us a signal. Yeah, there's not much to talk about. Penalties on both sides. It's, it's deferred. Yep, but he's still answer. supposed to tell. It's a 15-yard penalty on pass interference. But it's almost it, the, the line judge down here on our sideline threw the, the flag for offsides. So it should be offsetting, but they're just marking off the offensive pass interference. So I wonder. He must have, the other, yeah, Taylor's coach is Do you upset. think he picked up his flag? I don't know. Maybe he got talked out. I don't know. Because the other side did not throw it. Right. That's, that's strange. Yes, it is strange. In any we'll, event, we'll take it. it's first and 25 <laughs> we'll take it. for the Ducks. Pass out to the edge. A catch is made, and a tackle is made in a hurry. Brown again with the tackle. Devin Valdez, who's caught both passes tonight. Well, the one was called back. That well, was a great tackle there coming off. That wasn't his man. He was on an outside receiver. Once the ball was thrown, he came in and, and made a stop for a short game, keeping everything in front of him. Obviously, long yarded situation here. Don't want to give up a big play. So they'll allow Taylor to take those little two or three, four yard, um, and then as long as you come up and make the tackle. Valdez fakes a handoff, gets pressure, scrambles, then gets hit, and he's down. All the way back near the 20. A nice sack on the play by Eric Singletary. Not on the depth chart defensively. He's a wide receiver who's actually been getting some attaboys. He's out here playing defense now as well and gets a sack. Yeah, and that was a coverage sack right there. It was a great job uh, by the safety and corner down here. Uh, Brown and Soberall, everybody was covered. Quarterback was looking down this way. They did a little cross route. Good job of passing it off and staying there, and that's what made the quarterback flush and take a little bit more time than what he normally would that would allow, the, uh, allow us time to get that sack. Good coverage downfield. Taylor calls a timeout. We'll keep this one here. Singletary is a guy that, uh, again, Coach uh, Zimmerhansel told me is uh, he's been earning more play at time as a sophomore because he's been making more plays offensively. I just didn't know he was going to play defense too, but I remember against Lockhart he did play some corner because they spread us out a little bit, and we don't have a lot of depth at cornerback. Yeah, and you can tell right there, obviously, he brings a, a, a level of energy there. After he made that sack, he's getting up and he's firing up, and you can see guys kind of swarming to him, rallying around him a little right. bit. And so coaches love when guys play with effort. Yes, that's, without that's, a doubt. That, uh, the quickest way to get on the field is know your assignment and play with great effort. Yep. So the Ducks on third and almost forever, third and 25. Come yep. out with a special play that allows them to have a lot of players on the field. <laughs> <laughs> Including a coach. And a coach. Now ah, there's the play clock started. So trips to the far side. Valdez wants to throw near sideline, tries to throw a jump ball. That's Trace Richardson. 
Richardson. Ball's incomplete. Fourth and long. He's a junior that looks awful tall. It looks like he's yeah. about 6'5 or something. But what that right there showed me is the is our coaches have a lot of trust in Soverall, that corner. Yes. Third and 25 situation, usually you're going to have a bunch of safeties back and help out coverage. He was one-on-one -on -one down here yeah. um, against a really tall playmaking wide receiver. And so obviously they trust him a lot to put him in a one-on-one -on -one matchup in a third and long situation, trusting that he's going to get the job done uh, without safety help over the top. Again, a punt. This one's low. It's going to roll a little bit. And again, Griman fields it on a bounce. Tries to get outside, but somebody's hanging on to him, and he'll go down after another hit. A nice tackle in the open field by Cohen Tri Tyree, pardon me, a senior linebacker and running back. So from their own 43, Davenport has great field position again. Again, same deal. Defense doing a great job, making a stop, forcing a punt. Uh, fielding the punt, not letting the ball roll out, and here we are again getting, getting to start the field position on the plus side of the 40. Griman now lines up as a tight end on the near side. A fake to Golden and a pass. That's Kenny Payne. Kyler Payne, pardon me, makes a catch beyond the midfield. In fact, about an 11-yard gain, good for a first down. A little RPO there. Quarterback had an option to leave with the running back or pull it and throw it. This time, Golden has a handoff. Had some blocking, but they closed it in a hurry. Good job by the defense that time. And I'll tell you what, I've been, I've, been Tyree. In, I've been impressed with Taylor's defense. They're not very big. They don't have any guys that you're just looking yeah. at and going, whoa, you know, that yeah. looks like a, uh, a big, fast, strong, but they're, they're rallying the football. They're, they're playing good uh, team defense, and they're hustling around. And there's whistles. Probably a procedure penalty on the, the Wolves. And you don't see a five down, man, five down lineman set very much on defenses in high school. Kind of an unusual look. And their end kind of stands up sometimes, but sometimes he's down. Two linebackers in the middle and then the rest on coverage. Yeah, it's, it, I mean, obviously their first emphasis with, uh, with um, Golden and, and his prowess and how many yards he's gained, they're saying we're going to stop the run. Yeah. If they want to throw for 300 yards and beat us, then that's okay. But, you know, we, we got to stop the run first. And so that's the purpose of it is really I think that they would call it a four down with one of their backers typically coming off the edge. Uh, but, again, it's it, just by their alignment, it, it making it very obvious that, hey, we're going to stop the run. Yeah. And if they beat us passing the ball, that's okay. But Someone on uh, the Wolves was off sides was the call. So it's second and 12 from the 48 of Taylor. Hamlin checks with his center, talks to the offensive line a little bit, play clock under 10, but lots of time. Payne in motion. This time he fakes it to Golden and keeps it. He's not really running with a lot of energy and finally goes down just past the 45 at the 44. Gain of about four. So now third and eight. And again, moving quickly. Two by two. Golden goes out. Hamlin has to scramble. Throws a pass to the far sideline. It might have been caught. It really won't matter. It's a short gain. That's David Miller. And so again, you're kind of in that no man's land yeah. here, you know, 35, 40 yard line, a little too, obviously too far to kick a field goal. But, you know, if you punt it and you kick it in the end zone, it's really only a 20 yard net. So it looks like the offense is going to stay out on the field and see if they can convert on this fourth and eight. I don't think they've decided whether they're going to go for it or maybe he might punt. Might be a might be one of the situation quarterback takes a step back and he punts it himself. But motion again. He'll roll to his right. The left-handed quarterback has pressure. Now he does throw it, and it's an incomplete pass as he was almost sacked by Solis. And the Wolves will turn it over on downs from the Taylor 44, so they got good field position with two and a half to go in the first period. Yeah, and we, and we were talking about Taylor's defense. It's kind of a hybrid between a three-down and a three-three stack. They got three down linemen. They got a Mike linebacker head up over. And typically in a 3-3 stack, you got three down linemen and three linebackers that are kind of right behind 
but they're running basically a 3-1, and those linebackers are hipped up on the line of scrimmage. So like you said earlier, it's kind of a 5-1 defense yeah. with one safety playing center field and everybody else manned up. So yeah. we're going to load the box, stop the run, yeah. and then we're going to and we're going to play man-to-man -man on the back end. So and in essence, they're saying, I got six guys for your five blockers. We're going to try to stop the run and put pressure yeah. on the quarterback and make you beat us with one-on-one -on -one There's matches. a reverse, and now Anderson, the running back, Throws a ball that goes incomplete. That again is their wide receiver, the tall one, Richardson. The ball thrown by Jarvis Anderson, their playmaker. And Richardson couldn't hang on to it even though he made a nice adjustment and had a good chance to catch that ball. Yeah, a little trick play, a little reverse pass. It really didn't work out in the way Taylor was hoping and that it fooled everybody. You know, we stayed at home and actually had double coverage. But the ball was underthrown enough to where he actually adjusted and ended up making, yeah. having an opportunity to make a catch. And fortunate for us, he wasn't able to come down with it. High snap. The backup quarterback's in, by the way. I'll tell you about him in a moment. That's the running back, Fisher. This is Jock, uh, Josh Miklicek, the junior, 6'2", 170. He's thrown for about 300, almost 400 yards. He's run for 150. So they do use a two-quarterback set. He's the backup who's in right now at the end of the first quarter. And you can kind of tell more traditional sets when yes. he's in running and more maybe some drop back passes as opposed to spreading out and letting that quarterback run a little bit more. It's a handoff to Fisher, breaks some tackles and gets a first down. On what was third and seven, he gets about 10 all the way to the Wolves 43. I'll tell you what, that was an impressive run. And again, we talked about trust on our side third and seven to just uh, run a handoff and say, go get it. You know, obviously they showed a lot of trust in him as yeah. well, and it was a really good run to go pick up a big first down for Taylor. Well, with the two H-backs, if you will, they've got seven guys blocking on a running play. Miklicek throws it out. R missed tackle on the roll. This is their tight end, Anthony Cottrell, and he'll get a first down clear up to the 23-yard line as he broke the tackle of the cornerback on the near side. And again, we talk, we almost see it every time we do a broadcast. If this was five, five, six years ago, Connor Cobb had a chance to come back on one of those peel back blocks. Good job by him pulling up and just kind of boxing him out so he didn't get a penalty. This time the handoff to Fisher is smelled out. Defensive line is really good that time and stays home. Touchdown by 42, Evans Williams. Evans, Gianni Evans Williams, a backup at defensive ends in there and made a big play. Looks like there was a little bit of a bobble there with the exchange yes. between quarterback and running back. Ball ended up on the ground, and uh, good job by Taylor running back to jump on it. But, yeah, I think that even if they'd have got a clean handoff, we'd have had some pressure in the backfield. Confusion. This time there's confusion. Miklicek wants to run, and he's got some room. He breaks the tackle. Boy, they're breaking tackles right and left. Tackling has to get better as he'll score a touchdown on a nice run from 30, 28 yards. And they go up six to three with the extra point to come with less than a minute to go in the period. You know, that's something as a defensive coach, you just can't believe it. It's a busted play. You know, uh, you know, it didn't go off smooth the way that Taylor wanted it to. And you're like, how do we give up the, a big play on a busted play? And then I, we always used to joke around as offensive coaches if something like that happened. Man, obviously that worked out. Let's give it a name and run it. You know, let's give it a name and call it something. And uh, and Taylor, uh, quarterback, nice play by him, turning what could have been a disastrous play into, into their biggest play of the night. The extra point is up, and it's good. Again, Isaac Castro, the junior, with the extra point. And with a minute to go, we'll keep it here. Seven to three, the Ducks lead. 59 ticks left in the period, and not something that the Wolves coaches wanted to see is them to get a lead after one. And yeah, we talked about it already a couple times and Taylor 3 and 0 in the season when they lead after one and 0 and 2 when they don't obviously that's anything can happen that's obviously yeah. uh, but there's no doubt that this is uh, we're in for a dog fight tonight and Taylor brought uh, brought some energy and, and they're playing with some confidence by the way the head coach of Taylor is Brandon Houston his record is 6 and 19 this is his third season but they're 3 and 2 this year so figure that out. They had a winless season his first year. Last year they won a couple of games, three games, and now they're three and two. So he's. I'll tell you what, they, him and his staff have done a good job because, and again, I'm not, I'm not trying to talk negative. Taylor has been down for a yes, while. Yes, they have. Um, him coming in and, and taking over a, a winless program, I believe it was winless prior to him getting there as well for a couple years. Yes. And so 
you could slowly see it starting to build uh, build back up. And Taylor is a, is a proud tradition, proud community, and they want to be good, and they're, sl they're slowly moving back in that direction. And when, uh, when Champion played Hayes several weeks ago, I was on the call of that game, and they had trouble tackling the Hayes players. Now Davenport's having trouble back, uh, tackling the Taylor players, and that could be a problem. That one will go through the end zone for a touchback. And Davenport will start at the 25, first and 10, their worst field position of the evening. Yeah, well, you know, again, um, they've had, we've had some good drives and yeah. just a thing or two here or there. Not, you know, got down into the red zone one time, got a field goal, but then another time uh, weren't able to get any points out of it. And you got to give credit to Taylor's defense. We talked about they're flying around. They're daring us to throw the ball yes, down the field. Are. And uh, so far, we haven't been winning those one-on-one -on -one matchups, but I expect that we'll be able to uh, as, the, as the game goes on. But we're going to get one-on-ones down the road, and at some point, we're going to have to make a play in the passing game. So we've got a tight end on this set with the far receiver, one receiver to the far side. They'll give it to Golden behind some blocks on the left. He gets about five to the 30 before he's gang tackled there by a bunch of players, but we're back up in a hurry to run another one. Golden on the carry, brought down by 32. Not much pressure. Hamlin had some time, gets it off to Griman. He breaks a tackle. He's still going on the sideline. A great physical run this time by the receiver, the junior receiver, Emmett Griman. It was a heck of a run after the catch. There was two guys trailing him, broke two tackles but for what would have been a minimal gain. Gets, gets a big first down, also gets the energy on the sideline going again. Here comes that set again with Griman lined up as a tight end. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near. A little play action. He's going to the single receiver, Payne, going up the near sideline. The ball was a little wide. He couldn't have got to it. Uh, good coverage on the play, though. That's Marcus Jackson. Yeah, it was really good coverage. He did a good job of what we call widening the wide receiver, and the quarterback had no choice but to almost throw it because you, you always want to make your receiver fade to it. And he got widened so far there, the ball ended up out of bounds. But again, we're going to have to we're going to have to win some of those one-on-one right. -on -one matchups down the road. There, there it is again. We're going to get man coverage. We've got to connect on a few of those because they're loading the box up. Hamlin keeps it as they tackle Golden right after the fake. So they're focused on Golden, as uh, Brian has told you all night long. They don't want him to have a big night. Hamlin just took what they gave him. It's fourth and four, but I'm guessing we're going to go for it again. And I'm very similar position to what we were, you know, last time. I, I think the quarter just ended. I think that's the last play of the quarter. So with a 7-3 to three lead by Taylor, we're back after this timeout on the Wolves Network. At Audi Norpark, we believe that shopping for a car should be a positive experience. As the winner of both the Audi Magnus Society Award and the JD Power Dealer of Excellence, Audi Norpark strives for nothing but the best customer experience. From our receptionist to the service department, our team is committed to making you feel comfortable and respected. We know how difficult buying a car can be, which is why our brand specialists strive to inform and empower you to make the right choice. From the latest selection of new Audi models to our incredible variety of used cars, we have a model that will suit your lifestyle perfectly. Join the thousands of others who found the Audi of their dreams with the exceptional service at Audi North Park. Welcome back to Davenport High School. Tony Brubaker, Brian Hill with you up here on top of the press box as we love to be at Wolves Stadium. 7-3, Taylor has a first quarter lead as we start the second quarter. Taylor trying to stop it is third down not fourth down the yard marker was wrong so it's third and about four motion a late snap a little option play as they get the den the end to commit and golden has first down yardage up to the 41 it, it, it's not your typical option look but that end is the whole decision still because no one else is there 
Yeah, it's kind of a backwards option in the sense the O-line blocks the other yes. way, the end, so the, they, the end chases it, and really the quarterback's just holding it to make sure that end doesn't get up the field, and then he's going to toss it. I don't know how much reading. Fake of a handoff, and they're throwing it down the field and out of bounds. That's intended for Miller on the sideline near, but it, the throw just a little bit too wide for the second time. Really good catch, but again, just kind of ran, ran out of real estate there. And again, I know we've talked about it over and over, but Taylor's going to challenge challenge us to make those type of plays down the field. You could tell they're in man. Every time there's a motion by us, the, the guy manned up on him, chases him yep. across the field as opposed to bumping it off to somebody else. So I'm not saying we can't run the ball, but at some point we're going to probably have to challenge something up the field and pitch and catch. And then a little RPO pass intended for Singletary, but he lets it go through his hands. I think that's a catchable ball, but he isn't able to, and it's third down. It was tight coverage, really yeah. good really good coverage on the play by their corner, Marcus Jackson. He was kind of right in that hip pocket. So uh, good throw uh, by uh, Hamlin, right right on the hands, but I think the uh, defender might have got a hand in it. So we got a third and long again that mid-range. Is it four down territory? I think that kind of dictates what this call is going to be. If they try to get it all right now, or let's just run something conservative to make it fourth and manageable because we, we plan on going forward if we don't get it. Two receivers either way. Little option. Pitches it late to Golden, and he's not going anywhere. They sniff that one out. Golden on the carry. Brought down by number 50, Randall, 53, Maravilla. Fourth and long, Davenport. Yeah, Miller, Miller was there, too. This time it's fourth and 12. Looks like the Wolves want to go for it again. Play clock still at 15, so plenty of time. Waiting, the coach has got his hand up. Well, we're going to go for it. That or he's going to punt. I'm going for it. Deep drop, a little screen pass, and he can't get away from the pursuit. The defensive line all rushed. But that's the big defense. That's the middle linebacker, Alejandro Randall, who rushed and rushed but saw it coming and chased down Golden from behind. They'll take, turn it over on downs for the third time tonight. And again, good field position for Taylor. Yeah. Their, their one scoring drive they had was very similar to this. Got the ball good field yeah. position after a big fourth down stop. And again, now they're starting on the plus yard line. And with each one of those type stops, their defense is getting a little bit more confidence, a little bit more momentum. And uh, now their offense is jogging out there with, you know, under 60 yards to go and, you know, feeling pretty good about it. So Davenport's got some work to do. This is Valdez. He's got a scoot. Still going. First down yardage as he jumps out of a tackle and gets gang tackled. Clear up at the 42 of the Wolves. A gain of 16. Down at the bottom of the pile was the linebacker, Erickson. I'm telling you what, if you turned on the film, you could probably talk some of the old Taylor fans into thinking this is 1980s Taylor football, two fullbacks yeah. running outside zone, you know, uh, playing good defense, and, uh, you know, they're, they're coming downhill and being physical right now. A little bit of motion from the H back, and they'll run his way. This time, Fisher. Good boy. Didn't get very much. Defense was ready for it this time. Judge Erickson. Erickson was there. Great job of backfitting by Erickson on an outside zone. Comes back behind it, doesn't get over the top, and is able to get there and stops him uh, for a one-yard loss on a play. Previously, they had just run for about 10 to 15 yards. A good adjustment there. So their H-backs are trying to read what the defense is going to do as well as we've got a little bit of different look here on second and 11. Valdez hands it off late to Fisher. He gets dropped up. The ball's loose, and I think the Wolves got it. Good job, Low. I think that was Ryan Howe who tripped him up, and the Wolves get on the ball. And that, <laughs> that's Joseph Reyna who had the ball. I think their running back is still And I down. think he might have got hurt on the play. Yeah, he went up. He got upended and kind of landed on his head a little bit. I hope he's okay. Medical staff out there taking a look at him. Just hope that he's okay. So Wolves will huddle up on the near sideline. 9.36 to go. Second quarter action. Taylor up 7-3. Fisher still on his back. 
as everybody on the training staff is there looking at him. Yeah, anytime someone lands on their head or gets up ended there. Yeah, that was you know, a tough. Yeah, it's always a scary deal and pray that he's okay and gets up here and is able to get off on his own power. So Fisher is still down. Let's take a timeout. Nine and a half to go, second quarter action, 7-3, Taylor on top. Back after this timeout on the Wolves Network. <laughs> and we're back at Davenport. And uh, Adrius Fisher, the sophomore tailback, sophomore running back who's had a great year so far, got uh, toppled over on that one, landed on his head. But he got up under his own power and is walking off the field under his own power. It's good to see. Obviously, he's been a playmaker right. all year and early in this game. Uh, but regardless of that, hopefully he's okay. Hopefully he gets checked out. It's good to see him get up and walk off. Yes, it was. Maybe a power. chance to a come back deal. in the game. Yes, yeah, for sure. So they're back on the field on offense. Looks like in all the confusion, they must have called him down Will before Cur the fumble. Yeah, Will. Oh, okay. That would be a good point. Will Curtis is the backup running back. They throw it wide to Anderson on a wide receiver screen, but the Wolves are all over it. Right there first was Darian Brown. So it's fourth down and long. We'll see if they'll go for it. This is a trend in this game. I think if they would have gotten a little bit more there, if they would have yeah, maybe cut yeah. the distance down in half, they might have. But fourth and 11 is a pretty low percentage conversion rate. Um, so and their defense has been playing great. And so, you know, why give them a short field? Let's go ahead and punt them down, see if we make them have to go 80 or 90 yards. Griman is deep. Justin Tucker, the punter. Kind of angles it near sideline and gets a good roll. It'll go out of bounds inside the 15. And that wasn't Justice Tucker. That was a different punter. Ryan that Valdez. was their quarterback, Ryan Valdez, handled the punt there. So Wolves at the 13 will start first and 10, and they're out in a hurry, ready to go. 840 in the second quarter. 7 to 3, the Ducks on top. Referee waiting for the Ducks to even start back out because he wants to start the play clock. They come back out, and there's the play clock. Looks like Taylor's jumped into their four down front now. Still playing man free. Golden gets loose through the line of scrimmage and gets all the way into the secondary for he's dragged down at the 28. A nice gain for first down yardage. Wolves hoping to get him going. A good adjustment bit. by the offensive staff for us there. Okay, you want to keep all these guys in the box? So we'll they, add, they, we'll go right back, they go yeah. right back to a 52 look, if you will. Yeah, the, that last play or had 34. Two, two tight ends in there. So, so, okay, you want to load the box? We'll have enough people to block. And Golden jump. again goes right up the middle. He got about five yards before they dragged him back, but a good gain out to the 33. Call it a gain of five. It's second and uh, five. Kind of a cat and mouse game yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Jumping in and out of certain defenses, different offensive formations. Back down in their compressed three down now. So their defensive coaches went through a lot of stuff this last week looking at how to stop that run. Yes. Here's Golden, gets some blocks, gets first down yardage again past the 40. That's actually Brown. Griman. Oh, okay. Yeah. They've got a defensive player. Is that 32 or 22? I think it's 32, Arthur Serrano. Yeah. He's made a lot of plays tonight from his outside linebacker spot. So they've got another player down. I don't know. It's not a cramp. So it looks like they're talking something about his shoulder or his head. Don't want to speculate because neither one of us are a doctor. I'm not, I know I'm not. 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm not. <laughs> and I didn't sleep at a Holiday Inn Express <laughs> last night. So, again, uh, Kent Power Sports, Jeff Kent's company. Yeah, I saw two, I think, two of their um, mules or, range, yeah. uh, you know, um, ATVs down there. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, those things are pretty awesome. If there's a raffle, I'm going to throw my <laughs> I'm gonna throw my name in there. Those things are those things are sweet and uh, very fortunate that they help sponsor tonight. And also right. there's a lot of things that they have on display yeah. out here for the homecoming night. Um, so big big shout out and big thanks to, to those guys over at Kent, uh, Kent Power Sports. Game sponsor here at Davenport tonight. So everybody's getting some extra water and talking – in different position groups at this point. I think coaches don't really want to talk to them a whole lot more. <laughs> They've been talking for the last half hour of real time a lot. Mm -hmm. 7.43 to go, second quarter, it's 7 to 3. Taylor on top of Davenport. Serrano sits up now. We'll see if he gets up. Really, Davenport's bread and butter all year has been Golden running the ball and then Hamlin off play action and RPOs getting some quick hits in the passing game. Several receivers have caught good numbers of passes. Miller with 23, Payne with 21, Griman with 20. Uh, out of the backfield, Golden's caught seven. So they've shared the ball a lot. A lot of different guys have caught good number of passes. But, again, it's all based off the run. Like, exactly. like, like you said, run the ball first and now get those guys to commit a bunch of uh, bodies to the box, and now we're doing the RPOs. Now we got those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Yeah. And, and Taylor's doing that. They're committing a lot of guys to the box, and they're saying beat us on the outside. We're going to play man-to-man. -man. And so far their DBs have held up in that man-to-man -man coverage. And so um, – now Davenport's make we're making the adjustment, maybe adding some tight ends and some fullbacks to account for all those guys, starting to run the ball a little bit better. But again, at some point we're gonna have to win some one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside. No doubt. Motion. Handoff. Miller got it. A little jet sweep. Gets out to the 45, a gain of four. It'll be second and six. I'll tell you what, that was a good play by their outside linebacker, uh, Jackson Miller there. Running back came out to block him. He did a good job of extending and still and still making the tackle on that for a minimum gain. It's actually their free safety. He's just playing there. Yeah, he's playing. Ah, he's down the Hamlin box. gets some rush. Two different ends came in, and they're going to sack him back at the 40-yard line. There it is again. There he is again, Miller. Yeah, that's Miller for sure. So it's third and. We'll call it 12 at the 39. This is something you'd have to punt if you don't make this one. You'd think so. Because we have, early on, we had field position battle. Now we've lost it with some down, uh, turning it over on downs. Mm -hmm. Hamlin with a couple of receivers either way. Here's Miller in motion. They'll fake it to him and give it to Golden on third and long. Does mean he might go for it on fourth down since we got about seven, eight. To the 46. No, punter's coming in. I think it's just a little, not quite into your own territory. That was kind of a conservative play call, don't you think? Well, I mean, with his track record, golden track record of, yeah. of breaking it, you know, anytime you hand it off to him can be an explosive play, and you're thinking, okay, maybe the defense is not expecting us to hand right. off. Maybe we get lucky and pop one here. But, um, you know, good game, but not enough to get the first. Joshua Gill into punt. And that's a good one. And the returner, I think the returner wanted to go after it and just didn't, he lost sight of it or something. And it was just one of those ones where it's a little bit in front. Do I want to risk sprinting yeah. forward and, and maybe bobbling it or kind of letting it go? And he was fortunate that it took a, a, a bounce and rolled into the end zone because there was a good chance there that if that thing didn't take that hop it did, yeah. it could have pinned him inside the 10-yard line. So out to the 20. Taylor takes the ball with the 7-3 to three lead, 5.39 to go second quarter. Defense has to come up with a stop again and get the ball back if they want to have a halftime first half lead. You know, this is the second game we've done together, and it's almost halftime, and that's the first time I've seen the Davenport punter. <laughs> uh, there's number 88, Josh Gill. There's the backup running back, and he's a lumbering guy that has a good-looking stride. Again, Will Curtis, a senior, 
Seven carries for 44 yards, his numbers, but he's in action tonight. Yeah, with um, with uh, Fisher out of the game, he's in, and he's a different style runner. Now, he's a, he's a big body and kind of a bruiser, so yeah. different style, but, you know, well blocked and still effective. Gill had punted eight times to, before tonight, so that was his ninth. First time I'd seen him. Ninth punt of the year. There weren't any punts going on in that Lockhart game. Eight's back in motion. They throw it to an uncovered receiver, basically. Our defensive back on that, is that uh, Is that Subberall? Yep. Looks Boy. like there was some miscommunication between quarterback and wide receiver there. Almost like the quarterback thought he was going to run a little skinny post. Wide receiver sat down, and then afterwards you see the quarterback kind of put his hands up in the air. A little miscommunication there, I think, on what route. The quarterback thought it was going to be a post, and wide receiver Subberall stopped Subberall is playing down. him real, real loose. This time the running back caught in the backfield. As the defense did a better job that time of getting after him. You know, third and 13 from your own territory. I wouldn't be surprised to see Taylor with some sort of a conservative call here. If you'd have told them before the game, hey, you're going to have a 7-3 to three yeah. lead going into half, you know, I wouldn't expect to see a run here. If you get a first down, great. If not, we'll punt it and play some more defense. You know, he's straight drop back, has some pressure. Brew Adams is chasing him. Now Grant West is after him, and he flips the ball. That should be a penalty. He didn't get to is the line that of not grounding? We're going to have to talk about that, aren't we? If it doesn't get to the line of scrimmage, it should be. It did not get to did. the line of scrimmage. That has to be intentional grounding. He can't just throw the ball. I mean, he's outside the tackle box, but at the same time, he has to get back to the line of scrimmage. And uh, they're and not throwing the did. flag. Wow. Again, I think it was miscommunication between the quarterback and wide receiver. Quarterback dropped back, looking like he was about to throw it deep, and the wide receiver on the top side is just sitting at five yards huh. staring at him. So there must be a little bit of miscommunication there, and it looks like they're talking about it over there on the sideline. Again, this is Valdez punting. Hmm. Almost got blocked. It's a short punt. Goes out of bounds, not quite to the 40. That's just what the doctor ordered for us. You know, go out yeah. there, you know, punt the ball, hold them deep. Defense get a three and out. Pressure on the punt, short. Now you got the ball back and you've gained that field position we talked about. You've got that back now starting on the, uh, on your, on the positive side of the 40-yard line. So from the 41, offense is ready to go with four and a half to go. Seven to three, Taylor on top. Last time we saw this team play, they had about 35 or 40 by halftime. Tonight they've got three with four to go. Hamlin out of the shotgun, two receivers either way. False like start. a legal, legal procedure. Before the snap, false start, Davenport, five yard penalty. Replay so instead up. of first and 10, it'll be first and 15 and we start behind the chains right away on a drive that needs to be a big one. Yeah, you really want to get some momentum going into the half. Um, you know, have offense hasn't been as explosive, obviously, as what yeah. they have been. You have an opportunity, defense gets a big three and out, you get a short field, and you want you want to have points before this drive and start out going backwards is, is not something that's going to make our coaching staff very happy. They don't go with the receiver this time. They give it to Golden coming this way. Runs into his own man, then breaks loose. Doesn't get back to the original line of scrimmage. A gain of about three. It'll be second and 12. Short gain, second and long, that board. Their linebacker, Randall, on the tackle again. Taylor's mixing up that defense, and they're yep. flying around, you know, jumping in and out of different fronts. Looks like causing a little bit of confusion, and Golden's not used to, right. you know. He's been going crazy on pretty much everybody. A little bit of a low snap. Hamlin fields it, then throws it far sideline. I think he's going to be just shy of a first down. Good job. Good play call that time. Last couple times we've dropped back to pass, had pressure in his face. Okay, let's get the quarterback on the move. Let's get him out of the pocket, get a nice, easy completion, get some uh, get some yards to make it a third and manageable here. Kyler Payne on the reception. It's third and one from midfield. Hamlin looks like he's changing the play at the line of scrimmage. I'm guessing he did. Changed something. 
He's going to run it himself behind some blockers. He'll get first down yardage and go down, but not till he's inside the 45 at the 44. First down yardage for the senior quarterback. Big first down there. And even if we don't end up getting points out of this drive, getting that first first down, getting some confidence and, and keeping their offense off the field, that was a big first down. They crash both ends, and Golden has some room up the middle. Both defensive end took a couple of steps in, and he went right up the middle. Meller, they're, they're defensive back. Sometimes he's linebacker, sometimes he's safety. I'll tell you what, he's having a heck of a game. There's a lot yeah. of times where if he doesn't make the tackle there, there could be a touchdown. He's made a lot of those touchdown-saving type tackles for them. So second and two, Miller in motion. Golden up the middle. Has a little bit of room. I think he got first down yardage. I think they're going to give it to him. Then he's dragged back. First down that yeah, the other safety, Connor Barsu, along with uh, Meller, has made a lot of tackles tonight. So two backs in the backfield on either side of Hamlin. Tapping his helmet, trying to signal somebody. They give it to Golden up the middle. He breaks through. He's got some room. Near sideline. Has one man to shove him out, and Anderson does. But a great run. This time, Golden gets free. Is that his longest run of the night? I bet it is. He had one on that very first drive, but other than that, he's been bottled up pretty good until then. So first and goal from the nine. Fakes it to him. Pass to Griman. He's open near sideline, near corner. Touchdown. The first touchdown of the night for the Wolves. They got a flag. And there is a flag on the play. Wonder, I'm wondering. It's in the where defensive that, backfield. Where that flag's located, it might be a legal man downfield. Oh, they're waving it off. Waving it off. We'll take it. So the Wolves score via the touchdown. The second touchdown of the year by Griman through the air, and Hamlin's 15th touchdown pass against just three interceptions. Great drive there, getting that momentum before half. Yeah. Started off with a big third down conversion, getting points on the board, taking the lead, and now a little bit of momentum and confidence going in the second half, make some adjustments. And uh, come. now we moved on the line. So the extra point try will come from five yards deeper, is my guess. In the case it's a full start, it's that Five yard penalty. Well, our, one of our linemen was. <laughs> A yard upfield. <laughs> That's pretty pretty clue no one else had moved. Extra point attempt just a little bit longer. And the block. Gill gets his extra point try blocked. Then he picks up the ball and gets swarmed. So nine to seven will be the score. Hi, I'm Scott, and I love Chick-fil-A nuggets because the flavor is unparalleled. As soon as you bite into them, you're in a happy place. The seasoning is perfect. <laughs> hey, I'm Giovanni, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A nuggets is that they're perfectly breaded. There's just that right amount of crisp. I don't know what they're doing in the kitchen, but it's pure magic. We're back at Davenport High School. The Wolves have gone on top nine to seven, but again, the extra point try failed. Yeah, after a false start penalty, backing it up five yards, had the kick blocked. And so instead of a three-point lead, we only got a two-point lead here with only two and a half minutes left before half. 
And this is a big defensive drive for uh, for uh, for Davenport here because um, Taylor's going to get the ball coming out of half. So you don't want them to get one right at the end of half and then have a chance to double dip. And so it's a big defensive drive here. Uh, need a big stop here from the defense. Miles Mendez is kickoff fielded by Luke Thompson. He's downed before he gets to the 20, though. So coverage really good on the play. 228 to go in the second quarter, 9-7. Davenport on top. Kick fielded by number seven. Thompson, number eight, Evans, number 26, Star Jack. Ducks ball first and 10, number 18, Jarman. Tell you what, we couldn't ask for a better night here, weather-wise, for football about 75 degrees, yes. hardly any wind, beautiful night. So the Ducks will try again. Valdez the quarterback. This is Fisher back on the field. He has a gain of about three to the 21 before he's thrown down. Glad to see Fisher back on the field after that incident earlier. The, no doubt he provides a spark whenever he's in there on the offensive side of the ball for Taylor. C.J. Tanner in on the play, the senior playing because Zaire Livingston is out again with a broken finger. They'll give it to, fake it to Fisher. Now throw to the edge and good coverage on the play as our defensive back knocks it down. Is that 20, is that Boren? Again, it looks like just a little bit of confusion on the offensive side between quarterbacks and wide receivers. That time the quarterback pulled it and didn't, it looked like he didn't know whether he wanted to throw it, run it himself. A little bit I of promise you, they haven't that. thrown the ball this much all year. <laughs> they've thrown the ball as much in this game as they've averaged during the season in a full game. At before halftime, they've already thrown more than 13 times. They beat their average already. Or at least tried to. He's going to throw again. Some pressure. Has a man open and breaks a tackle, then gets wrestled down, but not till he gets first down yardage up near the 35. That is Anderson, Jarvis Anderson, their senior playmaker. And now you'll see them go quick. You always want to get that first first down and then kind of get into your two-minute offense to make sure you don't give th go three and out and they'll give the ball back. They'll snap this one with less than a minute 40 to go in the first half. They've got three receivers out. There's a quick throw out to the edge. Is that Cobb? Richardson. 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 Yeah, Richardson. Gain of four, second down. Again, Valdez wants to throw. He's going long, intended for Anderson in a fight. And he almost caught it, but he initiated the contact on Brown. If that's a defensive pass interference, I'll be very, very disappointed because he came and put both hands on Brown to start the possess, uh, start the difference. Yeah, and it's interesting. The back judge, who was 10 yards away from the play, did not throw it, but the line judge, who was 30 yards behind the, the play, the head linesman, yeah, up here, threw it. So that is not defensive pass interference because he initiated every bit of that contact. The side judge says no flag. And the head linesman on our sideline, again, you're right, from 20 plus yards, wanted to throw the flag. What are we doing? So, referee, you gotta make a signal. Well, the umpire has the ball back at the 38. I'll tell you what, this Ref crew is not going to win any awards for no, they're communication. Not. If, if he's going to pick up the flag, the ref has to wave the flag off. The sad thing is, I have their names and I don't know if I want to really listen to listen again. I don't, I don't know necessarily if it was a bad call. It's just they're not telling us. And they're not telling anybody yeah. anything. So everyone's just kind of standing around, like, "Hey, are we moving back? Moving forward?" And we're still talking about it. He's talking to the head linesman, but he's the referee. They're going to call it offensive pass interference. Offensive pass interference against the Ducks. That's what the umpire was waiting for. He was standing there with the ball. 
and none of the players were told what was going on. Yeah, it was just a strange sequence of events there. Less than a minute it's to like go. You saw the penalty, yeah. throw the flag, tell them what it is. Let's, yeah. you know, let's rock and roll. It doesn't have to be a five-minute dialogue every time. But those guys are, you know, we're, we're lucky to have those refs. You know, we, we are. Don't need to be. Too, don't need to be too hard on them. There. It's a thankless job out there, and you really only get noticed <laughs> yeah. Yeah. if someone's upset. So right, they're doing a good job. So two by two receivers. They hand it off to Fisher. He gets a couple of yards, but it's second in what, 20, 22. And now you'll see Taylor not be in any type of a yeah. hurry now. Now it's Inter third. Interested to see. I thought Coach Zimranzo might third take a timeout himself. Third you know, maybe try to get one more possession, but it looks like both coaches here are going to be yeah. plenty fine with, uh, with taking this 10-7 or 9-7 score into halftime. So the play clock and the game clock are about four seconds different, so they will have to snap it. So the coach tells them to go ahead and get down on the ball. They'll run one more play, and that should be the end of the half. And they're going to run it because they don't want to punt. They give it to Fisher. He has some room. And he's tackled as he gets to the original line of scrimmage, and that is the final play of the first half. So the Wolves will go into the locker room with a nine to seven lead and no, they haven't kicked three field goals. They kicked one field goal and missed an extra point. So nine to seven, your halftime score. We'll be back with the second half after this halftime extravaganza. Ah, the Red Hot Buyback event is happening now at Gilman Auto. We are ready to appraise your vehicle and give you top dollar. Can't come in person? No problem. Go to GilmanAuto.com for an instant appraisal. Gilman, it's the way to go. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Discovery Kitchen. My name is Sylvia and I'm a registered dietitian. And today we've got our Mario with us. Yes, I'm Chef Mario and I'm here with you today wearing my cowboy boots and my hat yes. because we're smoking today. Today we're gonna barbecue and we're gonna turn around and create some neat things and Sylvia's mm -hmm. gonna tell you about that. Yes, our theme this month is gonna be, well two months during the summer is summer fun. So during the summertime you're with your family and your friends and you cook uh, recipes and things that are gonna be shared with other people. So we're gonna be making his famous brisket. He's gonna show us his, his rub yes. and we're gonna show you how to prepare that and then also a side to go with that, it's gonna be a creamy coleslaw. The Comel creamy coleslaw yes. and just so you don't choke. Nobody in the audience chokes, including maybe that person. We have lemonade. We have yes. summer French lemonade <laughs> that's uh, very delicious blue egg. Yes. So, here we go. So we're going to start with our coleslaw. So the first thing, we're going to chop our cabbage. Cabbage. And it is a hard uh, <laughs> vegetable, so you have, to be, yes, you have to be careful. You have to wear a safety glove. And somebody recently learned to wear a safety glove. <laughs> yes. I currently have a safety glove at home now. Because you can. can and will cut yourself. I don't want to chop my fingers. Now, this will render about, what did we say, 16 healthy servings. So, mm -hmm. you may want to save the other for another occasion. They last pretty good. Yes, cabbage actually lasts in the fridge for about two to three weeks because it's such a hearty vegetable. That's why it was hard to cut. So, it lasts longer. And there's other colors right there. We have green, cabbage, red, and purple. Yeah, and I'm that's going, about it. And I'm going to remove this bone here, okay? Okay. This bone is uh, hard. Yes, the inside. So I'm removing that. And since because uh, cabbage is a hearty vegetable, it means it has fiber. So fiber, as we know, is really good for our digestive health, keeps things moving, and we don't get enough fiber, so cabbage is a really great vegetable. And you just want to shred it, you know? Yeah, that looks good. Shred it a little thin, as thin as you want to go. 
And once you get to a certain point, you take and you chop it about three more times. And then you just kind of like break it up. Why did you choose purple? I like color. I like cooking with color. Tell us about color and cooking. Yes, color means that it has a lot of different vitamins and minerals. We want to eat the rainbow, so we get all of those. Because if we eat this, and it looks better on your plate. It's kind of boring to eat the same color food all the time. So, makes your plate more, more fun. And so normally uh, our coleslaws are savory, right? They put mayonnaise in it. Mayonnaise we're not doing that today. And, and today I'm not going to do that. They, people like vinegar. Yeah, vinegar oh, too. I'm not on the vinegar side. Unless, unless it's going to end up being like a red wine vinegar, then mm -hmm. I just say, well, skip the vinegar and just go to the red wine. Because what is that vinegar? Fermented red wine. Red wine, okay. So, Chile red wine. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that, children. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's see. So, let's see, what we're adding, instead of mayonnaise or something like that, what are we doing? We're going to add vanilla yogurt. Vanilla yogurt. So, this is a sweet coleslaw. Right. It's and, really good. And we could go Greek. Could go Greek, yeah, Greek yogurt. So, Greek yogurt has more protein in it than a normal, just uh, standard yogurt. And because it would have protein in it, then yes. it would make it gluten thing. Uh, no, that's a different thing. So, uh, most yogurts are gluten-free, unless, you know, they have some weird ingredient in there. Uh, Greek yogurt just means it has more of the milk protein, and that does not contain any uh, gluten allergy in there. So, you're going with just this um, sweet vanilla? Sweet vanilla yogurt. And you don't have to add any more sugar to it. I mean, yes. unless you're like me. Really like it sweet, but we're going to add some more things. That's going to make it sweeter. Yes. Mm, yes. And yogurt is really good for you. Like we said, it has protein. It's a really great dairy product. Also, if you get low fat, even better. You just got to be careful with the sugar amounts in yogurt. Sometimes I can add a lot of sugar in there. Low fat? That's a low fat one and um, just make sure it doesn't have too much sugar and you'll be good. According to your recipe would be golden raisins and cranberries. Yes. I went after first. I added a little <laughs> bit of currants, okay, so. Currants, Cur they're really tiny. Tiny, tiny little bad babies. Yes, and dried fruit is really great because you can get it at almost any time of the year. Um, and they're always really on the shelves, right? You don't have to wait until they're in season, right? With normal fresh fruits, because these are dried when they're peak season and they're sold to you all year round. And they have all the same nutrients as a, the regular grape would have, right? Raisins or dried grapes. All the nutrients are still in there, so um, you won't be losing out on that. You can use it for so many dishes. Yes, yeah, so many things. And it may, adds a sweetness without really adding, you know, real sugar to it, yeah. granulated sugar. I mean, Although they do have sugar in them. And you can serve this uh, immediately, right? Or you can hold you it can in the fridge. You can hold it in the fridge if you want to until your brisket is ready. So. Yes. And that'll so. be next. So perfect. So I right. would say to answer that question, I would say even at least an hour to 30 mm -hmm. minutes in the cooler is grand. And why? Mm -hmm. Because it gives an opportunity for all of these ingredients to fuse. Oh, we almost forgot our <laughs> important ingredient here, our pineapple. I'm glad that we have Sylvia on board, believe me. <laughs> it, I thought, you probably thought it was just the decoration. Yes. You got distracted. So now we're going to cut our pineapple. So another sweet thing is going to make it taste even better. And this is a golden a pineapple? It's a golden pineapple, golden. so you notice the color. And it's real uh, sweet. It's small, so personal. Let me move this over here. Right there. I'm glad you stopped me before I got everything going. <laughs> yes. Let's see. Pineapple is very, very, uh, it's a tropical fruit. It's very tangy. If you eat too much pineapple, sometimes your tongue kind of hurts. It's because it has a certain protein in there that um, is used to marinate like meats and stuff. And so that means it breaks it down. So when you eat a lot of it, it kind of breaks down some of the things in your mouth, but you'll be fine. It's not, it's not gonna harm you. Your mouth just might hurt a little bit. And it, since it's yellow, 
It has a lot of vitamins and minerals, especially vitamin C, which is good for your immune health and fighting off uh, bad germs and stuff like that. Enjoy those later. <laughs> later on. Awesome. We'll put them in there. To preserve them. All right. All right. So now we're almost done. You go ahead. I'm you have gloves on. I have my gloves on. I'm going to do the little mixing here. So this is going to be our side dish, right, to our brisket. To our brisket. What are other things we could serve it with? Oh, this is a great dessert. Oh, yeah, you're right. Uh, you could have it straight dessert. up as a dessert. As a dessert, you could have it on the side. And, you know, you could serve, save it for sandwiches. Okay. It's part of a salad. Yes. I could see that being like a topping additive to a green salad. Mm-hmm. Center of the, of the salad, if you will. Mm-hmm. Just to wake it up. And again, the sweetness. And it's natural sweetness. Yes. Although it's still sugar, you know, probably don't want to eat the whole bowl but it is coming from a fruit source. So eating it with a fruit means it comes with other vitamins and minerals and nutrients. It's packaged in a, in a better package than straight sugar. Correct. Yeah, awesome. So, we so we're gonna put this here. Put it and off the side. Um, while we have that there, we're gonna get our brisket together. So we're gonna get that stuff. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. I'm gonna go light my pit. Yes. Take care. All right, everybody, we're back, and we've got our brisket station set up. So we're going to just jump right in. So what's the first thing, Mario? Well, I'm going to get started, and this is going to be kind of my mixing bowl to create uh, my mud. Yes. And this is this, this rub that we're about to make is going to be considered a wet rub. Wet rub. What makes it dry or wet? What's the difference? Dry would be uh, the dry ingredients. Just no so gonna, wet No wet products. So we're okay, so what's that? Some Camino. Camino. Okay. So we got some cumin in there. Cumin. The cumin in there. We got some brown sugar. Okay. So we'll start we off with put, it. That's a lot of it, right? Well, we did see. In our it, recipe, we, we have all the measurements. Yes, we have all the measurements in the recipe. So fear not. Be not afraid. Be not afraid. It does look like a lot, but it, you it need a lot look. to give the meat flavor. There you go. And, and that is? Uh, fresh garlic. Fresh garlic, okay. And add it to it. It was a tablespoon, I believe. Yes. Okay. And now comes the honey. Ooh. And be not afraid of the honey either. So we've got some sweet and salty flavors going together. Why is that important? Because that mix, it's kind of like making cookies. It has to add salt. Right. Why? Not to a cookie, but you have to. Because <laughs> one, uh, each flavor brings out the other one, right? Correct. One complements the other. Yes. They go well. And on the mustard, the original, on the re original recipe, I said put Bastante, a lot. Bastante, a lot so, of mustard. Is that a, a Dijon or what is that one? Uh, this is a honey Dijon. Honey Dijon. Ooh, now, fancy. Now, people have told me to use Italian, and you could. Italian? You could use Italian dressing if you want. Oh, okay. But uh, I prefer to yeah, go with Yeah, I can smell this. it. And Smells you could good. choose your poison. You can decide what kind of mustard you want. You want to go... Spicy jalapeno mustard. Right, whatever you your spicy tolerance yes. is. You have to determine who you're going to feed. If you're going to feed the family, my family, they can always add uh, pico de gallo or whatever to it. But my, the main one is the wife. And if the wife is not happy, ain't nobody. <laughs> so I, you got to do what she wants. There you go. Okay. So cool. I've added the, the honey mustard. Okay. And now, um, what's next? Oh, I'm gonna add, oh. What's the, in there? Um, the garlic, the pepper, the salt. Whoa. So you have garlic powder, salt, pepper, mix all together. Mix all together. So now we, we're gonna yeah. go into the fresh herbs. We got rosemary here. Ooh. Uh, could you use powder? What if you can't find fresh ones? What's your take on that? Well, <laughs> I know you're going to say fresh is way better. Fresh is way better. True. When you're doing something like this you too, may, right? Right. You may want to be growing your own if, 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 if 
Rosemary is common to have in just your outside of your house. It grows wild. <laughs> And since somebody in this room, I'm not gonna say, they said it was very easy to do the mix. Uh, <laughs> oh, to mix I it had, together? Well, I have that somebody. <laughs> I had said, I, oh, it's gonna be easy. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> well, then the last thing is olive oil. Okay. And, and this so, is extra virgin olive oil, right? Yes. This and is the best do, olive oil you can get. And what you do is you decide uh, to what consistency Oh, how wet you want it to be, or yes. as um... mm -hmm. how thick you want that okay. mud? Because this is the mud you're going to eventually wipe onto. Is it better to have it thick so it can stay on the meat, or it's just a preference? Preference. Okay. So I'll make it a little easy on you. You can use your spoon <laughs> and okay. you can use your fingers, but you eventually have to put the hand right to, to mix rub it. it on. So oh, you need more? See. Let's see. Well, again, you're going to be the one to <laughs> okay. decide. Well, I do this, you can do the meat. There you go. Let me put it back up here. It's not too hard. <laughs> we'll see. Wait.
The Red Hot Buyback event is happening now at Gilman Auto. We are ready to appraise your vehicle and give you top dollar. Can't come in person? No problem. Go to GilmanAuto.com for an instant appraisal. Gilman, it's the way to go. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Discovery Kitchen. My name is Sylvia and I'm a registered dietitian. And today we've got our Mario with us. Yes, I'm Chef Mario and I'm here with you today wearing my cowboy boots and my hat yes. because we're smoking today. Today we're gonna barbecue and we're gonna turn around and create some new things and Sylvia's mm -hmm. gonna tell you about that. Yes, our theme this month is gonna be, well two months during the summer is summer fun. So during the summertime you're with your family and your friends and you cook uh, recipes and things that are gonna be shared with other people. So we're gonna be making his famous brisket. He's gonna show us his, his rub yes. and we're gonna show you how to prepare that and then also a side to go with that, it's gonna be a creamy coleslaw. The Comel creamy coleslaw yes. and just so you don't choke. Nobody in the audience chokes, including maybe that person. We have lemonade. We have summer French lemonade <laughs> that's uh, very delicious. Brunette. Yes. So, here we go. So we're going to start with our coleslaw. So the first thing, we're going to chop our cabbage. Cabbage. And it is a hard uh, <laughs> vegetable, so you have, to be, yes, you have to be careful. You have to wear a safety glove. And somebody recently learned to wear a safety glove. <laughs> yes. I currently have a safety glove at home now. Because you can, can and will cut yourself. I don't want to chop my fingers. Now this will render about, what did we say, 16 healthy servings. So, mm -hmm. you may want to save the other for another occasion. They last pretty good. Yes, cabbage actually lasts in the fridge for about two to three weeks because it's such a hearty vegetable. That's why it was hard to cut. So it lasts longer. And there's other colors right there. We have green, cabbage, red and purple. Yeah, and I'm that's about to, it. And I'm going to remove this bone here, okay? Okay. This bone. Back at Davenport High School, Tony Brubaker and Brian Hill, glad to bring you tonight's action. We're just out of halftime, and the great entertainment we had here that <laughs> neither one of us watched. It's 9-7, to seven, Davenport on top. Uh, field goal and then a touchdown, but missed extra point. Blocked extra point is the two-point difference right now as Davenport will kick off any minute now to Taylor, who will receive that kickoff. The clock's been at 12 minutes for a while, waiting for both teams to... They've just been talking to each other for 20-some minutes. Do you really have to have a final conversation out here? Coach? Got to gotta make sure you get 11 on the field. Make sure you count them, but... No, it was a interesting first half. You know, it was not something that, you know, as as uh, driving the ball game tonight, you said, do you think it's going to be a, you know, non-double digit by either team yeah. at halftime? I would have probably voted no. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, but it's been a, it's been a good game, and, it, and we'll see what kind of halftime adjustments both teams made um, uh, during the break, and see if they make any adjustments coming out. And Taylor will get the ball first, and we'll see if they can put a drive together and see how our defense holds up. And we're in for I think we're in for a dogfight. We are. Miles Mendez will kick off for the Wolves. Puts a boot into it, and it hits. It'll be picked up inside the 10 and brought out to the near sideline. Pushed out of bounds at about the 23. That is all-important Kenyon Land, a junior wide receiver that we haven't seen out on the field much tonight. But he get a chance to run it back. He was showed a little speed there. Back there with uh, Luke Thompson, one of their returners. And then, of course, Jarvis Anderson, their playmaker on offense and defense. Yeah, we'll see which quarterback Taylor starts out here with. It kind of seems like two different styles, it yeah. feels like, when they're out there. Uh, one's more of a running type of quarterback. One is kind of more of your prototypical pocket passer. And it looks like uh, looks like it's going to be the junior. I don't want to say his last name because I will butcher it. Mikulinchak. 
Oh, that's uh, Miklicek. There you go. And he's going to run it on the first snap. And then he wants to throw all of a sudden. He hadn't got to the line of scrimmage yet. I believe they're calling it a catch. That's Anderson out near the 33. We got a bunch of Davenport coaches down here, and rightfully so, pointing to the offensive linemen that were about five or six yards downfield. I don't. I think everybody except for the quarterback and maybe that yeah. one wide receiver thought it was going to be a run. So it is a completed pass, and it's just short of first down yardage. So second and in inches. Meklachek will take it again. Gets outside containment. Gets some blocks from his receivers and then gets nailed down about the 42. So that's first down yardage. And that is Jalen Marlowe. Morrow, Morrow, Jason Morrow, the sophomore who's brought up for this game, and he's getting plenty of action tonight. Miklicek, he he's shown a little bit more mobility than yes. kind of what we thought coming in. He's the one that was responsible for their lone touchdown on the kind of that busted play. And then a pretty good explosive run right there. And they're going to go back to the same one. Big with, body. With four receivers broke out here to the near side. Miklicek will take it again and get three yards before he's brought down by Erickson. With some personnel changes. Yeah. Oh, tight end in the game. Yeah, they brought in three players, and just now is the third player getting off the field. Play clock still at 15, so plenty of time. Those two H-backs on the field, they'll run it. This is Fisher. Gets through the initial line, but then gets tripped up. Gets a couple of yards. It'll be second, or pardon me, third in about five. Davenport exchanges some defensive linemen and linebackers. Running the ball to the boundary. You've got a perfectly balanced set on for Taylor for both sides. And so he's finding the, the less bodies and running that outside zone. Play, play fake, some pressure on the quarterback. The tight end makes the catch. And he gets first down yardage. Anthony Cottrell gets up to the Davenport 41 and another first down. 90 seconds into the second half. They're on the move. Sophomore Morrow again coming up, making a play, making a tackle. So first and 10 from the 41. Again, a couple of H-backs. Basically an I formation. Hand off to Fisher. He gets wrapped up. There early on is a good, good job by Giovanni Evans-Williams. Backup defensive end. He's in on the play there, and it's a loss of three. Yeah, a lot of times when they're in that double H back, double sniffer, and one motion's over. You know, they're running ISO or zone to that side. That time they tried to run a gap scheme back the other way, and the one thing that kills gap schemes is pressure and inside penetration. We were able to get it on that play with the D line. Klicek wants to throw, has an in route, and a good defensive play. Oh, Jaden Savarall showing why he'll play at the next level next year. Reached in and just knocked it away from Richardson. Yeah, pretty good throw and pretty good route by the wide receiver, but even better coverage, undercut the post, able to get his hand in there. Great job of not grabbing on and right. anything that could be construed as a penalty, but kind of laying out and getting that play side arm in there and knocking it out and bringing up a third and long. Subberall has already signed with Trinity to play football there next year. Here's pressure on Miklicek. He gets bumped, gets away, then he gets sacked and throws the ball away at the last minute. That's Erickson on the sack. He does look like he is hurt. And kind of holding his helmet area though. I think his shoulder. Shoulder? Yeah, came down pretty hard on the shoulder, I believe. So that'll bring up fourth and very, very long. Keep it here to see how we start on this as the Wolves defense congratulated as they come to the sideline with a good stop on third and about 12. They sacked the quarterback. He got away from the first defender, but then more help was there. And again, Judge Erickson, one of those who put him down. Still on his back with the training crew out there. Actually, more trainers standing up watching than doing any conversation. I think just one 
trainer is talking to him now on the ground. So the Wolves lead it nine to seven. We played just about two and a half minutes in here to the third quarter. The two point advantage by way of a field goal and a touchdown but a blocked extra point. Collarbone. He is up but yes. I would agree with you. that he is not going to play anymore tonight. Like we talked about earlier I'm not a doctor but I've been around enough games usually when you're holding the arm like this. Collarbone, but down like this, shoulder. Hopefully he's okay. Hopefully it's just a sprain. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. Hopefully, but he, he took a pretty hard not only he took a pretty hard shot, but kind of landed right on that shoulder. So Davenport volleyball wins tonight. Now Valdez will be in punt formation for the Ducks. Decent snap, a quick kick, a low kick. End over end will get a roll. And go all the way inside the 15 for the second time tonight. He's placed it perfectly. And Grimen thought about coming up and trying to field that one, but that's you almost have to get the right hop that comes up enough to, to catch it. And he chose to just stay away from it and not give them a chance for a mistake. Yeah, so, no, again, not great field position, but defense comes out, does their job. Yep. Like uh, coming out of halftime, getting a, getting a punt, and now we're getting to see our offense back on the field after uh, the last time we had the ball went down and scored. So hopefully building some momentum uh, off of that and getting that running game going a little bit. And again, Taylor coming out in that same defense, daring you with yeah. the one-on-one -on -one matchups outside. Yeah. Long play count, snap count. They'll hand it off. That's Golden. They never get, get him down. But he gets just a couple of yards. It'll be second and eight. Back in a hurry. Two receivers either way. Golden, the lone setback this time. Motion by Miller. Long snap count again. Hamlin rolling to his right. Throws with his left hand. Intended for Miller, but it goes incomplete as it was not close to the receiver. I didn't really get a chance to get downhill and square up. Kind of had to throw that fading away. Yeah. Again, bringing a receiver in motion across the formation. The defensive back for Taylor following him over there, telling you that it's in man. Trying to rub a little combo route there. I think that if he had held on to it for a second longer, might have had that hook route coming in behind it there that he might have been able to hit. Um, I think that was uh, Griman that was kind of sitting in that hole, but unable to connect. We got a third and long here. Got a look here. We haven't seen much of it. Your slot back is not very well covered. He's got a man who doesn't know he's throwing the ball. That was intended for Payne, but goes incomplete. As Kyler wasn't even looking. Hamlin had to throw with pressure on him and probably got rid of it quicker than he wanted to. Like we've been talking about, Taylor saying, we're going to try to not let you run the ball and we're going to pressure the quarterback. And if you think you can win some one-on-one -on -one matchups uh, and protecting long enough to throw to those one-on-one -on -one matchups, and so far they've been getting a lot of pressure, uh, not really allowing us to step into the throw. The snap goes through the end zone and we've got a tie game. That'll be a safety. The snap intended for Josh Gill goes over his head. I think he was almost surprised when it came as well because he didn't react real well. And the ball rolls through the end zone and there's two points for Taylor and it's 9-9 and we have a free kick coming up. And they'll get the ball right back. So not a first down, you have to punt. You have a bad snap and it goes through the end zone. Now you free kick it from the 20. That's kind of add insult to injury. Give them points and you got to kick it off. So you know that they're going to get good they're field They're going to get great field position, yeah. And so unfortunate series of events there. So the last.
last man on the kick cover team comes out to the huddle. Not real sure why there's so much of a delay. Not sure. We huddled up and they just let us do it, I guess. So Gill will be out. My guess is he'll punt it since the place, uh, the kickoff guy is Mendez. So Gill will punt. He'll punt from his own 20. Anderson's in the middle of the three men deep. There's a nice high kick. It'll bounce on the ground at about the 40. That's a free ball. And the Wolves fall on it. That's a free kick. It's our ball. I don't understand what Taylor was doing, do you? It was almost, it was almost like they thought it was a punt. You know, it was almost like they thought it was a punt to where we don't have to field it and let it hit. And then even once the ball hit, it was no they, sense of urgency. They didn't have any did. urgency to go after the ball. It's a free kick, like a kickoff is. And the Wolves <laughs> cover it and fall on it, and they have the ball at the Taylor 40. Fortunate. So, so you can uh, just see the, the deflation yes. on the Taylor side. The coach yes. has got their head. Heads in their hands like, I can't believe it. But again, it almost it looked like they thought it was a punt. Yeah, I, it was punted. The handoff to Golden, and he's covered up. It was punted, but it's There's still a, Randall still again. Uh, yeah. Randall got a hold of him, and now they have another player down. Yeah, Solis is down. Solis again. He was down so earlier in the first half, yeah. Colby Solis. He was in on the tackle there, not, didn't really see what happened. So they were already down to only, only brought 38. They only had 38 players here, and Fisher went down but came back. Uh, Mikulek went out, and he won't come back. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, not exactly. Uh, Solis has gone down earlier. And he's walking off under his own power, so it'll be second and 10 for the Wolves from the Taylor 40. So again, we've got two receivers either way. Golden, the lone setback. Hamlin will go out of the shotgun, and the play clock might start here. There it is. And again, you got man-to-man -man across the board, and basically seven guys in the box, and everybody else is manned up. And so... Give it to Golden as the receiver went motion and they handed it off right behind his motion. There was a hole there initially and a good gain up to the 32, so a gain of eight, it's third and two. Tell you what, big block by number 55, Carter Trainer, kind of got himself one on the inside there and led them springing the run, the, a good run there. A handoff and a pass fake by Hamlin. And Golden gets first down yardage on a four-yard gain to the 28. That was Maravella made the tackle. Golden going far side, gets a block from the receiver, and finally gets shoved out of bounds, but not till he's inside the 15-yard line. So another first down for the Wolves as they march. You feel them kind of getting their rhythm back a little bit. They love getting that first down and immediately going back up. and and going quick, and then that's two in a row, and so uh, getting that mojo back a little bit on the offensive side of the ball. First and 10 from the 14. A little flip to Payne coming this way. Kyler, and there's a, a flag for a hold, but be my guess on the interior yep. part of the line. Payne was trying to kind of pick and choose his way. Yeah, unfortunately, that's typically when he throws that from where he is. Yeah. About 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to be a hold or a chop block. A referee again more worried about the ball placement than telling us what it was. Mike McWilliams still hasn't given us. Here he goes. They're going to call holding. You know, there's a lot of officials that are very emphatic letting you know what it is. Mike might be the most nonchalant. Nonchalant. Yeah. <laughs> as he just kind of stands there with his shoulders shrugged. And, and I get it. I mean, he's got to ask yeah. the Taylor coach, hey, do you want to decline it? Do you yeah. want to, I understand all that. But 
He even turns back around. It's just kind of, yeah, it's holding. You all know it. It's <laughs> holding. Back him up. But anyways, going backwards here, like first and long. Got to get to the four. We're at the 26. Here's Golden up the middle. Has some room. Has a block. Falls forward. Gets past the original line of scrimmage, so it'll be second and about seven, and we're back on pace. Golden up there, right now by 23. Quickly again to the hut, to the line. Yep. A tight end and a handoff. Some more yardage inside the 10 to the 7. That'll bring out a key third down and three at the seven-yard line for the Wolves. Yeah, and you think that it's four down territory after the last PAT getting blocked and really wanting to cap off a drive with a touchdown here. Might be four down territory. This is the two-back set here. Oh, weak set. Golden and Emmett. Now Golden through the line, gets close. I think he got past the four. Should be a first down. Right at it is what they're marking. Should be a first. Yeah, they're going to wave it through. So at the four, it's a first down. Grimes, Grimes coming up Grimes, a little bit, asking yeah. to come out. So they're scrambling around. And this cool. sub's going to come in. DeAnthony Moore come in for him. Looks like he got rolled up there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it looks like it. So... Two by two again. Golden the only setback. Everybody's in tight. As far as the uh, running back and quarterback, not very deep this time. Hamlin takes the snap, gives it to Golden. He doesn't get much. Maybe a yard falling forward. That time just a case of numbers right there. Taylor's got a lot more guys in the box than we do have got, uh, guys blocking. And... Uh, the one unblocked guy was able to make the play there. And Maravilla in there primarily with the tackle. They bring subs in and out again. Davenport in a hurry now with a tight end on the right side. The snap goes through Hamlin's hands. He'll fall on it. It'll be third and long, third and goal from the 13. So the second bad snap of the second half, third quarter, still 5-10 to go in the third quarter. This time Hamlin just falls on it, knowing there would be pressure instead yeah. of trying to pick it up and perhaps having a fumble. So third and goal from the 13. Golden still goes. Still got man-to-man -man on the outside if they want to take a shot. 32's following, following us over there. Miller it's, it's in man. motion. He wants to throw. Over the top for Golden toward the end zone, knocked away. Nice play. That ran, that's the middle linebacker, Randall. Got all the way there because he was chasing Golden. Yeah, he was manned up on the back, so he chased the rail. And again, down here inside the, inside the red zone, they've been playing man the yeah. whole time, but down here inside the 20, it's man press blitz the rest, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and uh, seven, eight man box a lot of times. And so able to have some success, you know, running the ball, getting it down here. But then that bad snap is really, you know, a drive killer right there. We'll come out and try to kick a field goal or salvage some points out of it. But you really, you know, really wanted uh, seven points out of that once you're down there. First and goal inside the five. Gill will have a 30-yard field goal try. Pressure, but he gets the kick off, and it looks good. And it is good. So 12-9, the Wolves go up. 4.38 to go in the third on the Wolves Network. Kaling Auto Group's biggest used car sales event of the year is going on now at Audi North Park. North Park Lincoln and North Park Lincoln at Dominion. Choose from over 3,000 pre-owned cars, trucks, and SUVs. Get 1.99% for 72 months and one year of unlimited car washes from the wash tub. You'll get special posted pricing and unprecedented trade-in allowances on every pre-owned vehicle during the K-Leg Auto Group's biggest used car sales event of the year at the North Park Blue Bonnet family of dealerships. Davenport takes a 12-9 lead, 4.38 to go in the third quarter. Wolves work their way into a first and goal inside the five. But a miss, miss Q on a snap. And then an yeah, incomplete I mean, it, pass, and you try for a field goal, and you get it. Yeah, I mean, you're always happy to get points out of a drive, but that's got to be a little bit of a letdown yeah. uh, for that offensive side. You get a great drive together, start running the ball. 
you know, uh, especially on a changeover where you right, gold, recover your free kick. Golden kind of getting his mojo, getting yeah. some big chunk runs, first and goal inside the five, and then to have a you know a bad snap and having only get three points out of it. Even though you're happy to get points, obviously it's kind of a little bit of a letdown. Luke Thompson returns the kick, but not very far. Gets out to about the 23 or 22, where they'll start first and 10. Good special teams tackles again by the Wolves, who lead it by three with four and a half to go in the third. Yeah, I've been very impressed with the kickoff unit of Davenport. A number of times they've kicked that little short bloop kick in an effort to maybe try to get some confusion or get the ball in the hands of a guy who's not used to having the ball in his hands and still able to get down there and yeah. make the tackle, sometimes inside the 20, in this case the 22-yard line. Uh, it's pretty impressive for the kickoff unit. Remember tonight's game sponsored to you here at Davenport High School by Kent Power Sports and all they do. Tell you what, I really like those those mules they got there. <laughs> A late arriving receiver comes in and takes the near sideline. Now motion by Anderson. They'll give him the handoff. Now the quarterback Vallet <laughs> Valdez keeps it. Gets a short gain out to the 26. It'll be a gain of four. Yeah, we're going to see Valdez obviously for the rest of the game. Uh, you know, with Mikulich going out, hopefully he ends up okay. I think I see him over on the sideline with his shoulder pads, kind of in a sling. So we hope that he's, you know, okay over there. But we're going to see Valdez the rest of the game. So we'll kind of see how their offensive packaging and play calling, uh, whether they kind of stick with what they've been doing or does it kind of adjust to him. Sure. He's more of a running guy as opposed to a thrower. And so Harry takes off on the snap. Breaks a tackle, he has first down yardage for he's wrestled down by Brew Adams. Tell you what, Valdez is not a very big statured guy, but he runs tough. Right. He's running between the tackles and uh, putting his shoulder down and picking up some good chunk yards. Same formation, they're going at it again. And with Miklicek at, out, you're right, he'll have to go the rest of the way. H-back goes in motion, Valdez follows him. It's about five up near the 40. And again, I think Taylor is perfectly happy with, what's, with what this drive is doing right now. Run the quarterback, you know, lock. Lim limit limit the, the, the bad things that can happen. Uh, and let's get four or five yards a, a, a pop and, and, and be patient. And, and try to lure the defense into expecting it and then throw yeah. one over the top because you've got receivers who can make plays. Looked like they jumped early on that one. Valdez runs, but gets just a couple up to the 46 before he's wrestled down. Erickson and a bunch of, that was Evans Williams also in on it and some others. Now you're kind of in that range where, you know, third and four, third and, third and a long four, you know, obviously you're in a situation where if you don't get it, you're gonna punt. So do you risk putting the ball in the air or do you try to stick, you know, stick with what you got you here and run the ball with the quarterback? So we'll see what they do here. Fernando Gonzalez also on in the play. There's a quick pass to the edge. That's Richardson. Can he break tackles? He finally gets wrestled out of bounds. I'll tell you what, good timing on that throw by Valdez. Yeah. You know, he caught it and the hit ball was out of his hand before the receiver even turned around. On those type of routes, if you hold it a little bit too long, that corner's driving down through the back of your wide right. receiver right as he's catching it. Good timing and a, and a big first down conversion for, for the Ducks. We're giving Richardson, and I said this earlier, giving him a lot of respect. Our best cover guy is Severall, and he's giving him a good eight yards off the line of scrimmage. Especially on a third and four. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. let's get up a little bit tighter, make sure they don't throw a stop route in front of us to get a first down, but again, not give up the big play. Anderson in motion gets the handoff, and there's the play. There's one of the bigger plays of tonight as we catch him on the jet sweep. Is that Tanner? Yeah, C.J. Tanner, the senior starting, made a big play there. A loss all the way back to the 45. It's second down and 16. And not only is that a big play, make him lose five or six yards, but it's a, it's a you know, get the defense yeah, energized, yeah. big hit. And also, it takes Taylor out of their normal normal schedule. They're yes. not this throw with this quarterback, they're not a throwing team. So get behind the chains is not something that they feel comfortable with. H back in motion, coming right. He's gonna throw. Straight drop back. Has a little bit of pressure. Now throws long. Intended for, but incomplete. Looking for Miklicek, Jake Miklicek, the twin brother of Josh. Ooh, the ball really wasn't very close to him. 
and again, this is what Taylor wants to stay out of, right? Yes. The third and long situations. And again, Valdez is doing a heck of a job playing quarterback for him, but this is just, they're more of when he's in the game, we're gonna run the quarterback, we're gonna take the short throws. Third and 15 is not something that this offense with this style, what they're doing right now is necessarily built for. So this is the exact type of situation you wanna stay out of. And that negative play on first down really got them off schedule, so. It took a long time to get the play in. The play clock's under five already. Motion. They went to throw. Did Delay they call a timeout? Delay a game, and they had some wide open. Yeah. So they did call a timeout Coach has got before the, the delay. The yeah, it was really close. So a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. 12 to 9, the Wolves lead. So third and long, we saw the play was going to be a pass play, and they had four receivers going, going. So and and the end result, I was like, oh man, they got they had a guy wide open. Now you never know. I mean, maybe our, yeah. our safety heard the whistle and just you know didn't even move or anything like that. But they were going to try to run a four vertical seam there. Yeah. They, they had their inside receiver running up the hash and what appeared to be a chance to maybe hit one of those hole shots, but. Again, their, their coach saw the time running down, didn't want to make a third and 15, third and 20, so took a timeout, and uh, you know, we're, we're over here discussing it and trying to make sure that we're sharing that up. Because as a defense, there is nothing more demoralizing than yeah. giving up a third and long. Yeah. Especially a third and 15, third and 16, so making sure we're getting our defense short up here and getting everything, you know, everything squared away to make sure that we, they're, they're punting after this point. Clock finally signaled. Valdez, straight drop. We blitz a linebacker who gets a hold of him. He throws it, but I think he's in possession. They were, well, there's a flag down here. And the line judge on this side threw the flag. Wonder if we'll find out what happened here. Come on, Mike. Dead ball, false start. Dead ball, false start against the Ducks. So, I bet we're wishing that it never called it. because we Why, did you set. hear whistles? I, di I didn't. I if, saw him start running in about okay. once the play. Okay. So I, okay. It's loud. There's, I'll tell you what. We showed up. Our crowd here yeah, tonight, our, it's loud here. There is a huge and, crowd here on the home side. So, us not hearing the whistle isn't necessarily. Homecoming 2022. Absolutely. Little pressure. And he gets sacked again, and there's a false start again. They did it again. The inside, the slot receiver on this side is taking a step before they snap the ball. I said it the first time he did it. He's done it a couple times since. Well, I don't, I don't understand what what he doesn't understand. You can't go until the ball's well, snapped. I, we wish that he. We, yeah, we're was. trying to talk to him and tell him figure it out too, because that's twice we'd had a sack. Would have been fourth down, and they're getting other opportunities, even though they're going back five yards. I'm sure our coaches would be like, hey, we'll take the sack. Like, it's third and 26, and that is Devin Valdez, the brother of the quarterback, Ryan Valdez, the junior brother of the senior quarterback. A lot of brothers on that team over there. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, there's not a, not a whole lot of good play calls in the playbook for third and 26. So, well, they got they one receiver there. by himself down here, now motion this way. So it ends up being a two by two. He wants to throw over the middle. It is caught by Anderson, but short of first down yardage, but it is clear out to the middle. I'll uh, tell you what, that gives, them, that gives them a chance to now go for it on fourth down. So fourth and about eight from the 47. And I bet the question you, is, will they yeah, go for it? If it's fourth and 10 or more, Pat, and you're not to the midfield, then they're punting for sure. But that big chunk play, they're gonna say, let's go for it. Now they got enough to where they feel like they and got a shot They're gonna throw at. it again. He left early again. He left early and they didn't throw the they oh. didn't throw a flag. Now they're gonna call interference. Pass intended for Anderson. They're saying we got there early. And again, that's just there's nothing more frustrating for a defense and for a defensive coaching staff to be in, go from third and twenty-six and then give up a little bit of a chunk, but still kept him in front of you. You know, didn't give up a first down and then now giving up a penalty on fourth down. Um, you know, that's something that's just, you know, 
we need to recover and bounce back and, and get one of those plays again that kind of rejuvenates the defense and uh, gets everybody kind of hyped up again. But again, that's kind of that's something to kick in the gut right there for sure when you got them third and 26 and then ends up giving up the first down. The 15 yard penalty takes the ball to the 32 where it's first and 10 with 49 seconds to go in the third quarter and a 12 to nine lead for Davenport. But Taylor on the move. Valdez has three receivers to the near sideline. The lone receiver is six, six foot six, Richardson. A little motion by the H back. Valdez wants to run it. Finds a seam, then gets stopped. Give him about five or four to the 28. Second and six. And now they're back on schedule. They're doing yes. exactly what they want to yes. do. And uh, it's kind of a, a weird formation since there's not a running back back there. But what, it, what a running quarterback allows you to do is spread it out in a three-by-one formation and still have normal numbers what you would have if you were had a fullback and a running back in the game. And so they're able to get some defenders out of the box and still have a, a, a fullback-based running game. Run again. There's a flag. Thrown by the umpire early, so it's almost like there was movement or something. Might want to stop the clock that continues to run. The quarter is not going to end because of the flag. See what the umpire, it looks like he wants to walk back, so it's against them. Sideline. Well, there was a flag. So we have to do something with that. Sideline. Oh, well, that wasn't the flag that was thrown by the umpire. I think the umpire just saw the flag and blew it dead, but the flag was thrown by the line judge over there. He threw it clear out that far? But they're not walking off because I think the first one's a warning. So okay. after all so that, we're going to have It is the end of the third quarter. 12 to 9, Daffenport leads. We're back after this timeout on the Wolves Network. At Audi Norfolk, we believe that shopping for a car should be a positive experience. As the winner of both the Audi Magnus Society Award and the JD Power Dealer of Excellence, Audi Norfolk strives for nothing but the best customer experience. From our receptionist to the service department, our team is committed to making you feel comfortable and respected. We know how difficult buying a car can be, which is why our brand specialists strive to inform and empower you to make the right choice. From the latest selection of new Audi models to our incredible variety of used cars, we have a model that will suit your lifestyle perfectly. Join the thousands of others who found the Audi of their dreams with the exceptional service at Audi North Park. And we're back at Davenport, start of the fourth quarter. It is third and it should be third and eight. Well, no, they're having trouble, wait a second. We can't start yet. They're having trouble with the line crew. So third and third and six. They need to get to the 22 for a first down. Motion by the H back going left. They'll hand it off to Fisher. And if he breaks a tackle, he's still on his feet. Inside the 10, or inside the 15 to about the 10, down at the 11, and he has been uber elusive when he's had the ball, even since he's come back. Tell you what, he runs hard, and it almost looks like he's out of control sometimes because he's moving so quick, And but he's elusive, and he's made some big runs for him. So first and 10 from the 11, they give it to him again. Good blocking as he has space, and he is still churning those legs. A powerful young man as a sophomore at uh, uh, 5'8", probably 160, 165. He's powerful. He's running behind those pads, though, and he'll be a good player for them for the next two years even after this. So second and one, second and two from the three. Really, in essence, second and goal. He's right behind Valdez now. Again, the H back in motion. Valdez keeps it. He's got one man to beat, and he does. Touchdown for Taylor. The Ducks take the lead back. It's 15 to 12 with the extra point to come. Boy, they had everybody. Everybody coming this way with the H-back motion, and he just ran against it. 
Yeah, I just had outran one guy yeah. to the corner. But then I, I again, I go back. Third and 26. Yeah, without a doubt. Third and 26, and it turns into a touchdown. Again, that's, like I said, that's a kick in the gut. You need the offense to come back out here and put some points on the board and respond. Castro's extra back. point is good. It's 16 to 12. Just 57 seconds gone in the fourth quarter, and the Wolves find themselves down by four. We'll keep this one here. 11 minutes, three seconds to go. And really what we've been waiting for the Wolves to do all night long is just to kind of get on schedule, find some rhythm on the offensive side of the ball, and they really haven't done that very well to punch it into the end zone. So now... Not very consistently. No, not yeah. consistently. You know, they've had three, four plays in a row. We're like, okay, here we go. Yeah. You know, here we go. This is the this is the offense we're used to seeing. This is the up-tempo, the big chunk plays that were uh, the, you know, on schedule, fast tempo that we're used to seeing, and we get two or three play bursts of it. And then, you know, you have a play where mishandle snap or a penalty or something that takes you back and kind of gets you out of that rhythm. Still got a lot of time left in the ball game. Uh, but we definitely need to, to establish a drive here and regain momentum back on our side of the on our sideline over here. And it all starts with with uh, that offense and, and doing what they've been doing for five straight games up until this point. So the district opener here tonight, and right now Taylor has a 16 to 12 lead. 11 minutes, three seconds to go in the game. Castro will kick it off for the Ducks. Be a white. Wouldn't be surprised for a little onside kick or a pooch try. He kicks it long. And it's fielded inside the 10. And doesn't get much out to the 25. That is DeAnthony Moore out to the, what do we say, the 26 or 27. It's first and 10. So. From the 27, we start with some effort to go, and I don't know why there's a huddle. This is not huddle time. As soon as that ball is spotted, we should have been ready to go. Or we were ready to go. The referee should have been ready to go. They go back to that run, stop, and look. Yep. Saying, beat you in the air. Eight man in the box. Golden follows some blockers, steps through a good hole. He'll get about eight, falls forward like he usually does. Down at the 36, it'll be second and one. Good job blocking on the inside part of that line, offensive line. They blitz a linebacker, Golden beats it, and he gets first down yardage. Now he's on the loose, across midfield. Now the 40, the 30, the 20. Touchdown, Justin Golden, and right back come the Wolves for the lead. One of our offensive linemen got shook up on the play. Yeah, look, I noticed him Tyler the play Mayfield. before. The play before Tyler Mayfield, he kind of limped into the to the huddle and. Uh, limp back to the line of scrimmage. I think got dinged up on the play before, but going back to the touchdown run, Taylor came with the run blitz, brought some linebackers up, and that's kind of a all-in, so to speak. You're either, you know, if, it, it's designed to make a big play and to make a big stop, but if you breach that line of scrimmage, you get past the first layer, there's nobody there. Right. And that time we were able to breach that first that first line of defense, and because those guys had blitzed, there was no second level player and uh, we got to show off that speed that we're so used to seeing. No doubt about it. So, 19-16, we are exactly 54 seconds later. <laughs> that drive went, what'd we go, 73 yards yep. in uh, 53 seconds. Two plays? Two plays, two I believe, plays. yeah. Yeah. Two, yeah, I think it was two second, plays. Second and That's one. That's what we're used to, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what we're used to seeing, that explosive score from anywhere offense. Obviously, Golden gives you uh, that explosive playmaking ability. 
Haven't really seen that all night so. because of that run-stopping defense, but they took a gamble and blitzed. And we know he got 100 yards tonight now. Yeah. He, he I'm not sure we could have totaled that up before that one. But I don't man. know if he's going to quite get to his Lockhart mark, yeah. but still, that was a big run. Take the lead back, get the momentum back on our sideline. Mendez's extra point fielded at the 13 on the far side of the field, coming the distance and tackled before he gets anywhere. Again, special teams, good work by Donovan Kirby, the junior special teams, keeps them back inside the 20. They'll spot it at the 16. And you see what those big explosive plays do, not only obviously scoring yeah. the points is huge, but now the crowd's back into it, the sidelines back into it. Now all of a sudden you get a kickoff and you got dudes flying down there, pinning them inside the 20, making them go, you know, 84 yards now and so there's a different type of energy when the offense is doing what we're accustomed to seeing them doing and we've been able to do tonight is put two different defensive lines in there this is the backups on the defensive line to start this out got a bit a little different look Grimans in there on defense too Fisher don't let him go the distance he almost did one man to beat and that was a great tackle by uh, Evans Williams, or he might have gone the distance. I'll tell you what, Fisher does a great job on that stretch play of getting wide and then sticking his foot in the ground and making that one vertical cut and getting north and yes. south. Uh, like I said, he's been impressive tonight for sure. Just a sophomore. We look a little confused on defense right now. We rush for a quick pass to Anderson, and he's down on a good tackle by Brown after a gain of, what, that six or seven. It'll be second, a gain of six, it'll be second and four. And staying on schedule for Taylor. Yep. Getting a first down, getting five, six, seven yards here. Wouldn't be surprised to see a run, either quarterback run or one of those uh, stretch plays again uh, to Fisher. Quick throw to Anderson. Almost read and almost knocked away by Boren. He read it, he just didn't get there. Yeah, it's tough coming from that safety spot to try to pick off a five yard stop route, but uh, he did, she sure did trigger there. And it was actually a well thrown ball low and away. If it had been a upfield right. shoulder yes. throw, it might have been picked. Anderson makes the catch. It's third and one from the 39. They give it to Fisher going right, has a hole, has some men to beat and carries guys about five yards with some help from one of his teammates. All the way across midfield to the 49. Wow, Evans Williams in on the tackle, but that was a nice run. They're running the stretch now. They're, I mean, they're, that outside zone play is really working for him. He runs it well. O-line's doing a good job of stretching things out, making the defense run laterally, and then like we said before, Fisher making that one cut and getting, getting vertical. He's tired though, he's got his hands on his hips. He's, he's been a workhorse tonight for him. They fake the handoff, he rolls right. Looking for and catching, that is Cobb. Connor Cobb catches it inside the 35 for another first down. I'll tell you what, great throw. I mean, yes. a little bootleg rolling back to, to his right and a little uh, flag route by the, by the tight end and threw it right on the money, uh, on the run. That was a heck of a throw on the move. Stretch. And Fisher avoids one, now gets popped, but not until he gets about seven or eight yards. Our defensive linemen are peeling back and getting some good hits on him. Yeah, and I think that was, was how. That was how, but uh, he's already got seven yards. Yeah, seven, eight yards on first down. Taylor doing exactly what they what their game plan is, get ahead of the chains on first down. And Fisher kind of bumps the quarterback that time, gets a first down run all the way to the 20 before he's wrestled down. Morrow among those making the tackle. They're gonna run stretch. They're gonna run the quarterback and they're gonna run stretch until we stop it, you know, and and, um, and they're, they're, they're blocking it really well with an explosive back and and uh, like Darrell Royal, the old saying, dance with who brung you. They're gonna, they're gonna keep doing it. They've marched from their own seven, 13. Yeah, get seven, eight yards of pop. They're gonna keep, now they're doing that double sniffer formation. They're on the move, first and 10 from the 20. They've overloaded the left side. Fisher kind of bounces back right, but gets swung down. Down at the bottom of that pile is Howe again. Ryan Howe, the junior. 
And we were finally, ran stretch again, we were finally able to get penetration at yes. the point of attack and not allow him to make that cut to get backside. We're rolling guys in and out, trying to get fresh bodies in there. We're rotating two or three D linemen almost every play to try to get fresh bodies in there. Grimans on the blitz. Fisher gets out of that, then spins around, but it gets popped again. Good job. C.J. Tanner among those made early contact, and the secondary came in and also helped out. And you've got to think four down territory here, obviously down. They're only down three, but this is a little bit lengthy for, for a field goal. Maybe if they get they five haven't, or six They yards. haven't made a field goal all year. Yeah, so you've got to think it's four down territory, so I wouldn't be surprised to see another run here. Or if they think they can throw that quick five-yard stop route, they might do that as well. He keeps it. He throws it. Oh. oh, and we went for the interception, and Cobb caught it, and they've got a touchdown. It's a sophomore Morrow went for the pick. Tried to undercut it. Saw it, read it really well. Tried to undercut it. Real good throw by the quarterback, throwing it high to his tall yeah, receiver. High. And uh, Morrow tried to undercut it, read it really well, but just threw it right over his head. Really good catch and a really big response uh, from, the Taylor, from the Taylor offense. Now here's an important extra point with 6.48 to go. This puts him up four. If Castro can make it, we jumped early. He got it off, and it's good. It's 23 to 19, 6.48 to go in the game on the Wolves Network. Hi, I'm Scott, and I love Chick-fil-A nuggets because the flavor is unparalleled. As soon as you bite into them, you're in a happy place. The seasoning is perfect. <laughs> hey, I'm Giovanni, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A nuggets is that they're perfectly breaded. There's just that right amount of crisp. I don't know what they're doing in the kitchen, but it's pure magic. Back to Davenport, will receive the kickoff. Down 23-19 are the Wolves. 6.48 to go in the game. Still a lot of time to go. Castro will kick it off. It is Griman and Moore deep for the Wolves. They went to this hash this time and they were in the in the middle last time, or even on this hash, this time they're on the far hash. And he kicks it deep. Ryman at the seven. Comes near sideline, has one cut back. Gets across the 30, shoved out of bounds. Just past the 35, I believe, or just short of the 35, where the Wolves will go first and 10. So Griman now going both ways as he's playing safety as well as wide receiver. Did a nice run back there and goes out to line up at receiver. Yeah, he's a jack of all trades. He plays wide receiver when they want to go with a tight end set. He comes and puts his yeah. hand in the ground and plays tight end. Sometimes he's in there in the sniffer back, fullback type of deal. And so he's going to line up a tight end here. And then probably next play they'll split him out as wide receiver. It's just a testament to how smart and how athletic he is to be playing multiple positions. They're still not changing much of what they're doing defensively that's worked. They're going to try to stop the run. Here's a quick pass, looking for Payne on an inside slant from the far side, but the throw isn't on target, and it's incomplete. You got Taylor coaches getting in the ear of the ref over there saying they got a lineman downfield. Anytime that RPO yeah. happens, old linemen think it's a run. That's all they know. So that's the, that's the risky run sometimes with those RPO games is, is getting a lineman downfield. But. Give it to Golden, coming near side. There he goes, he's on the loose. They will not catch him. The 20, the 10, end zone. Justin Golden did it again. And just like that, two plays, and the Wolves score again. 66 yards on the run, is that right? Something like that. Just about, long way, long way. He's, well, they now he's getting them. close to 200, his average of 207 a game. Yeah, we knew he, they weren't going to contain him forever. Right. You know, but that was a well-blocked GT counterplay. Uh, he 
either the defensive end or, uh oh. We have bad snap again. And the ball, goodness. So instead of being up four here with a couple of extra points, I don't know who our normal snapper is. Bubba Thompson is the center. And all of a sudden we have trouble with snaps. Yeah, and that hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt us. Only, we're only up two now. But uh, going back to that touchdown run, you know, it was a guard tackle pull counter. Yeah. And typically what a defense is taught, if the end gets underneath the pullers, you know, to try to spill the ball to the outside, the linebacker's supposed to overlap it to be there waiting. That time, linebacker overlapped to go to the outside, but the defensive end also got kicked. So you had two guys out there and nobody in inside. the A gap. And so just like what we saw a couple weeks ago with Lockhart, yeah. he's so good at sticking his foot in the ground, falling those blockers and just, you know, hitting it north and south. And there was nobody there once he made that one cut. Really good blocks by both the guard and tackle when they were pulling there. Uh, Well-designed play. And again, back to being that explosive offense that we've seen so much. Now we just need defense to go out and get a, and get a big stop here. And again, Kent Power Sports, the sponsor of tonight's game here at Davenport High School. 25-23. The Wolves lead it by two. And that was 6.27 to go. That took less than 30 seconds. And there's a little pop-up kick that will hit the it. ground. And it. it'll be live, and they fall on it just in time. Ball at the 27. That was Cobb who came and fell on it. That was dangerously close to being a, a problem for them again. And I've been really impressed with the kicker for Davenport, Miles Melendez. That's a hard thing to do right there. It's, I don't know if you, any golfers out there not taking a full swing. A lot of times if I have to do like a little not full swing, I shank it. Yeah. Well, they're telling him, hey, find that, that little soft now. pocket right there between the second and third level. Hit a little bloop shot. Hey, make sure it hangs up in the air long enough. But also, I want you to make it land on right about the 20, 25-yard line. And he's done it in, uh, in multiple different games, hitting that spot. And the ball's land on the ground and uh, almost came up with that recovery there. All right, a double tight end, I formation with a H back. Fisher, boy, he's quick. Look how fast he is to the outside. Can we stop him? And finally, Brown does, but not till he gets to the 42 or the 41. Obviously, a first down. I'm telling you what, he just beat everybody to the corner. That It didn't matter who was there. Yeah, most of the time when they run that stretch play, we string it out, and he makes the one cut and cuts back to the inside. That time, we didn't have an edge, and he just kept running on his path and outran everybody. He's got to be a little bit tired, doesn't he? This time he goes right. He's being chased by Erickson, who slows him down, and then he goes down. No gain. Tell you what, he is tired. After that run, yeah. I saw him tap his helmet to the coaches. Yes. The coach was like, no, you're, no, you're a workhorse. Get back in there. So he's coming back to the little yeah, he didn't the have that. He didn't have the burst well, on that one. He's, he's tired. This got to be his 30, 40th carry. Yeah. His only break he got was when he was banged up for a little while and getting checked out. But as long as he's in there, they're going to get the ball to him. He's their most explosive playmaker. But So second and 11 from the 42 after a long run for a first down. This time they want to throw on a play fake, chased by Howe, down the field, double coverage, and we knock it away from Jarvis Anderson. Jarvin Anderson, their do-everything playmaker. Richardson's almost been a better receiver tonight, but Anderson's made some big catches too. Yeah, it was kind of a bootleg. You know, I don't think uh, he had anybody open, so it was kind of a help, uh, throw it up in a prayer, let our athlete make a play. And again, this isn't really the type of down and right. distance that Taylor likes to be in. They are in plus territory, so. I have to mention again, our defensive line continues to sub in and out to keep them yeah. fresh. Four down linemen on this one, rushing the passer. They'll hand it off to Fisher. Can he string it out? Ah, but he just beats everybody to the corner again. Finally, we catch him. I'm not sure he doesn't get a first down, though, as he's up to the 30, and it is a first down. Singletary gets there, but I'm telling you what. Our, defense, our defensive coaches are upset right now. The One of the main thing, one of the first things they teach you in middle school in football is you've got to hold an edge. You've got to hold an edge. You've got to make sure you make the play cut back, and the last two times they've run that stretch play, he's gotten the edge and just beating everybody to the corner. This time he's going right. We string it out and make a tackle. That was Tanner and Erickson both there. I don't know a whole lot, but I know one thing. 
Fisher is going to sleep well tonight. <laughs> he has been running and running. And he has. He is beat. He's coming him. back to the huddle, he hands is, on his hips. But he is. He is tired. He's so breathing we're heavy. You, we're going to give you the ball again, and here we go. Rock He's and roll. He's about eight yards deep on second and six. They give it to him again, going right. We get a hand on him, and then we knock him down after a couple of yard gain. Got a penalty by the line judge down here. It's taking a while to get out there and talk about it. But looks like we have a player down, 82, Kobe Clark, holding his leg. But the line judge down here threw a penalty but didn't stop the play, so that tells me it's probably an illegal formation. Maybe didn't have enough guys on the line of scrimmage by Taylor. Sideline warning. They called the sideline warning yeah. on us. But again, first one's a warning, I guess. Yeah. So again, Kobe Clark, the junior defensive lineman down. And again, I have to give a lot of credit to our defensive coaches who've done everything to keep players fresh tonight, knowing this has been one of those games. Their offensive line, we don't get height and weight on many of them, but they have been very physical tonight. Making, and they've got an elite running back as a sophomore. Well, not only have they been physical, but they're running the ball a lot and they're going quick. Yeah. You know, and so um, when you can do those two things as an offense, you're going to wear down a defense pretty quick. Not only, you know, are you uh, you're getting big chunk plays and being physical, but you're running the football and then you're snapping it very quick. So we're doing a good job of rolling guys in there to try to keep fresh bodies and keep the keep the energy up. This is going to take a minute because Clark is not moving very quickly. He is walking under his own power, but he's got a very obvious limp, and he has walked from the far sideline to the near hash, and he's just now passing the hash line. And I'll tell you what. Obviously, we hope we hope uh, Kobe's okay. Obviously, but one thing this does do. Does it allow Taylor to go over there, get some water? Yeah. Let Fisher take a knee for a second, catch his breath, get some water. So I'm afraid he's going to be back to full speed here. So are we, though, because we got a break, too. Yep, we did. We just got to find someone with the same kind of jet that he has. So third and about five from the 25. Motion by the H-back going right. They give it to Fisher. No. Valdez keeps it. He's going to go to the end zone. Touchdown, Taylor. 4.19 to go in the game. They take the lead again. This time with the extra point, they'll go up by five. You know, they gave it to Fisher about eight, nine, ten times in a row. And obviously all eyes on him yeah. and deservingly so, but that time they fake it to him. The quarterback keeps it out the backside and there was nobody home with all the attention given to Fisher. Uh, because, you know, with how explosive he's been. And, good, and the senior Valdez ball. was rested because he hasn't run a whole lot lately. Yeah he's, yeah, he's been handing it off for nine straight plays. The extra point looks to be far right, so it's no good, so it remains a four-point no game. So 419 to go, 29-25. We'll keep it here. They've got two timeouts left. We still have three. Wolves are going to have to go the distance again and get another touchdown. Shastin Golden says, just give it to me again. I'll do it a third time. Yeah, four. Let's, let's not do it in a minute, though. Let's, let's use some clock this yeah. time. Four minutes, 20 seconds. I mean, he could score three or four times during that time period. But, uh, again, like after a defensive first half, well, I think we went at halftime nine to nine. Nine, nine, nine to seven. Nine to, nine to seven. And we had yeah. the safety. Nine to seven, and now we've been trading. You know, uh, yeah. offense is kind of coming to life here a little bit. Uh, just need it. It almost feels like who can get a stop first. You know, which defense can go out there and get a stop. And I think that uh, whoever can do that, obviously, is going to put their team in a good position to win. So Griman and Brown now back for the Wolves. Castro will handle the kickoff chores for the Ducks. 
And again, he's on the far side, the far hash. Still wouldn't be surprised if they try something. But he kicks it long. Ryman will field it, this time at the five. Wants to angle to the near side. This time he gets up the middle and had a seam, but it got shut down in a hurry. Good coverage that time. I'll tell you what, I've been very impressed with our crowd tonight. Aiden Gutierrez got the tackle. I know yeah. it's homecoming, and yeah. typically that's a little bit bigger of a, of a crowd than normal, but they've been here, they've been loud, they've been into the game, and uh, they've definitely provided some uh, some support for the, uh, in the student section. Got a ton of them. You love to see that, you know, students getting involved. A lot of students down in the end zone, too. Pretty yeah, much, that, that pretty much like unsupervised, the, but that's okay. Pretty much the middle schoolers over there, and it looks like the older kids right here. But Snap a little bit low. Hamlin hands it to Golden, who gets six to the 36. That'll be a gain of seven. It'll be second and three. On schedule, Golden gets it, has a block, gets right, breaks free, has one man to beat, gets tackled and driven back, but hangs on to the ball. It doesn't matter. It's still a first down. Same play they scored on last time, and GT again, guard tackle counter, able to get the kick out block and, and able to hit that crease, and that's been two or three times where they've had big explosive plays on GT counter. So first and 10 from the Duck 44. They give it to Golden, this time left, cuts back right up the middle, has a room, and gets hit, and he gets tackled, but he gets right back up, and after a gain of six, we're at the 38, we're right back up, wide receivers in their spot, center over the ball, Play clock barely moving. Shotgun snap, give it to Golden again. They blitz from the outside. He beats that first line. Gets tackled by a linebacker. That is Randall, but not until he gets another first down. You know, we're saying, you know, y'all got a workhorse over there. And Fisher, we'll, we'll see your Fisher and we'll raise you a Golden. We're, we're about four or five handoffs in a row and letting. Let him do what he's so good at, get big chunk plays. Golden but, isn't the kind of running back that makes you miss him. He just goes. He goes. He puts his foot in the ground, and he goes. And he, he runs hard. Motion. They fake the flip. Golden up the middle on some interior blocking, but only gets a couple of yards up to the 26. So a gain of one, maybe two. Another offensive lineman gets up kind of. Yeah, I think uh, Anthony Rodriguez got rolled up a little bit. Someone kind of landed on his ankle there. Hopefully, kind of walks it off and he's okay. So second and nine from the 27. 2.30 to go in the game. Oh, a nice play flight. And a touchdown pass to Emmett Grayman. What a play. Golden carried out the fake handoff perfectly. And Griman got past the secondary by a good five yards. Hamlin just kind of threw it up for him to run under, and he did. Yeah, kind of a trick play, kind of hid Griman in there as a tight end so many times. You know, he, when he's got his hand in the ground, he goes down there, and he's just blocking a linebacker. That time they give a long play fake, and he kind of bypasses everybody and is able to hit it right down the seam. A good snap. The hold is good. The kick was partially blocked. But it's still good. So we have our three-point lead at 32-29, 2.22 to go in the game. So we take almost two minutes on that drive, which was good, but they still have two minutes to go. Don't think they'll kick a field goal because they haven't really tried one all year. But we've know. got to come up with a defensive stop. You never know. It's been a wild game back and forth, so I... I bet you if they got you know something down there to maybe they can feel confident to maybe send it to overtime, yeah. they might be forced to do it. But yeah, time. they're, they're going to try to score a touchdown, yeah. though, no doubt about it. What wow. a great play call. What a, uh, what a well-executed play. Anytime you get kind of close to that red zone, you're kind of thinking, okay, what kind of shot can we take here? Because you know it's four down territory, so let's take a, uh, let's take a chance. And that's something they've probably been holding in their back pocket for a while. Perfect opportunity to pull it out and uh, well-executed play. And, the all-important extra point we got now is three-point lead. And so now, again, we talked about it earlier, the first defense that makes a stop is probably going to win the game. And so we'll see if our defense can go out there and get that big stop and help us hold on to a win here. Our defensive linemen are huddled up. 
Getting some encouragement with one another. Coach, Mendez. Coach is in there, a little motivating, a little come to Jesus talk. Hey, boys, come on, let's, we need one stop. We need one stop. Mendez will kick it off. This one goes deep. Fielded by Thompson. Boy, he gets through a couple, and he gets all the way out to the 27 before he's wrestled down. He ran a long ways, even though he didn't get a lot of yardage. I'll tell you what, he cut it all the way back, yeah. and there's only one guy there, and if Taylor's Jarvis Anderson yeah. gets a block yeah. on that, the guy he was supposed to, there was a big crease over there. That last, the last defender, we were able to get him, but they had a guy over there uh, for him, and uh, Anderson just kind of missed that block right there. But, again, lively crowd getting into it. Rooting on the defense, need one stop, 2.15 left in the ball game, up by three. And, and Junior Zaire Livingston, the linebacker who had so many tackles, who's out with an injured finger, encouraging his team as they take the field. The defense now has to come up with a stop now that the offense has put him up by three. Valdez wants to throw, gets some pressure. He's sacked! Grant Weiss! The junior defensive tackle gets back there. Clock rolls, a loss of seven. And if I'm Taylor, you've got two timeouts. You've got over two minutes. You've been running the ball so effectively. We're in our kind of prevent defense. Why not run the ball, get a couple first downs, get by midfield, and then and then start maybe taking some shots. A minute 40 to go. Now they're behind the chains, and a lot of time has gone off the clock. Big sack by the defense. Three-man rush. They get close to him again. He's got a pass to Anderson, broken up. And no interference there. Singletary and Brown on the double coverage. Jarvin Anderson, the intended receiver. It's now third and 16. They are extremely behind the chains, though it does stop the clock. And they've had third and longs that they've completed before. Yeah, if you're Taylor, you got to, I mean, it's, you're going to go for it on fourth down, right? Minute and a half left, only two timeouts. So you've got to get at least something back here. Even if you don't get the first down, make it fourth and five. Make it fourth and six, where you've got a chance. And, and they're going to take a timeout. There's not many men in the box. There's not many men in the box. That might have been a handoff there. It might have been. We were all spread out. We had yeah. three receivers manned up with safety over the top and a, a, a single coverage with a safety over the top here. We're talking about six or well, seven. Four-man box, four yeah. five-man box. And your most explosive player all night has been your running back. Yeah. If you know you're going for it on fourth, that might have been a good time to hand it off and see. You never know, you might pop it for a big one, but at least get eight, nine, 10 yards back to where it's fourth. They called the one. timeout. We, yep. didn't, we didn't flinch on that one. Yeah. I thought we might when I saw what they had because he's looking at, he's looking at Fisher and we got three down linemen and two linebackers, and they got five blockers. We're we're in keep everything in front right. of you mode, and uh, and Taylor's trying to figure out a way to at least get seven or eight yards here to make it somewhat fourth and manageable. Obviously, the uh, Taylor coaches saw something that they didn't like, and uh, had to, had to burn their second time. So they only got one timeout left, right. uh, I believe, and so. Regardless of what they got to do, if they are able to get a first down, they're going to have to start working quick. Five men out in coverage now. Valdez wants to throw. He's looking right, has a man, and he can't make the catch. Wow. Tended from Miklicek, and it goes incomplete. It's fourth and 16. They had him, they, did, they ran a nice little combo route, a little scissors route, and the outside guy became the inside guy. Had him there, I'm not sure whether he was supposed to break it off flat, and that's what the quarterback was expecting. But the ball was a little bit low, uh, but they had an opportunity to, to get a big first down there. So now, you know, obviously this is the ball game right here. What, fourth yeah, you and don't 16? Have, you don't have two plays to get it, so you gotta do something here. Gonna throw long, looking for Anderson. Brown is there and he breaks it up. It's incomplete. They'll turn it over on downs with a minute 17 to go. There is no flag. The Wolves are gonna come up with a victory if they can run out the clock. Great coverage. 
A good effort by both guys. Receiver went up and kind of batted it to himself. I thought he was about to come down with it. Excellent coverage. And again, we talked about it. First defense that gets a stop, probably going to win the game. And our defense went out there and was able to get that big stop. And uh, barring something silly, we're going to be able to run out the clock and, and come away and uh, go 6-0 and on the year, but more importantly, go 1-0 in district. Wow. You talk about what a game. What a game. What a game. We said that in the Lockhart game, and it was a 20-point game. This is a three-point game. We'll take a knee. They have one timeout left. And I'll tell you what, Taylor has played a heck of a ball oh, game. Wow, yeah. They've got a heck of a football team, and I think we saw a future budding star before our eyes yeah. and, and Andreas Fisher and, and how well uh, he played tonight. And we talked about the struggles that Taylor's, Taylor has had in the, in, the, in the recent years. I think it's safe to say they're trending in the right direction and that they've got a good football team and they'll compete in this district as they move forward. Tough loss for them tonight, yes. uh, but they played a heck of a ball game and, and uh, they're definitely heading in the right direction and they'll be a force to reckon with in this district as they, as they move on with their last four games of the year. And Brandon Houston, their head coach, I know he's frustrated because he expects to win, but his team, his defense, that's as really, and we haven't seen all their games, but that's as good a defense as we've seen against yeah, we, I mean, we this scored, Wolves offense yeah, this year. We scored three or four in a row at the end there, but there was a, oh, there was a while there where it was a struggle for us. It was a struggle they, for us on offense. And they were worn out too. Yes. I mean, they've got a lot of guys going both ways, and you wear out in a game like this. Unbelievable. They have no way to stop the clock this time, so the play clock at 30, the game clock in a minute. They'll have to snap it one more time, but on fourth down, the clock will run out. Yep, just got to wait for the game clock to get under 40 seconds and then one more knee, and that'll do it. Hamlin takes the snap and goes to a knee with 36 seconds on the game clock. That's it, folks. The Wolves will win. They'll go to 6-0 on the season, 1-0 in district play. And that's a big one in District 13 4A. Davenport goes to 1 0. Taylor was at Davenport tonight. Marble Falls at Canyon Lake. We know Canyon Lake was winning. Lampasas and Burnett were also playing. So three teams will be 1 0. Three teams will be 0 1 yep. on this first weekend of District 13 4A. What a, what a ball game. And again, hats off to Taylor for an excellent, excellent ball game. And Davenport, you know, wasn't the prettiest game that we've had all year, but found a way to make a stop when you needed to and found a way to, to pull out a victory. Great win, the Wolves win it 32-29. So we're there for everyone with Wick Productions for Brian Hill. I'm Tony Brubaker saying good night and God bless. The Wolves win it 32-29.